Are you wondering why Christmas comes earlier and earlier each year? Are you caught off guard for the Yuletide murdering season? Hey, it's me again, Wild Jim from Wild Jim's Psycho Murderer's Tool and Holiday-Themed Weapons Emporium. If that sounds like you, then come on down and check out what I've got in stock for your holiday slaying. Hooks for your attic? Got that. Christmas light garroting wire? We got that. Lab-engineered acid that changes the building blocks of life at a fundamental level? We got that. Doing a murder? Think of Wild Jim's Psycho Murderer's Tool and Holiday-Themed Weapons Emporium. Deck your halls of pain and torture. We watched... Oh no, what did we watch? (laughs) (laughs) We watched Black Christmas. We watch Black Christmas and Jack Frost. <laughs> I think we might need to go through that one again there. No, no definitely no. not. <laughs> that, that's some know that we're real. Um, oh, perfect. Uh, well, hey, everyone. Welcome to Citizen Kane Versus, uh, where we compare a widely considered great movie with a movie that is considered to be more on the schlocky side. And we ask ourselves, honestly, which is better? Uh, my name is Jack Rennie, and I'm joined uh, by my friend... Uh, Sean, Sean Jacklin. As well as Daniel Benoit. Daniel Benoit. Uh, and we have a guest this week, our second ever guest, uh, Mr. Rob Feedham. Say hi, Rob. Hello. <laughs> I am Rob Feedham. <laughs> this is the soundboard of Rob Feedham. Uh, <laughs> he's just like trapped in a closet somewhere. Um, <laughs> But Rob's uh, going to be mostly recording uh, without his video today, if you're watching on YouTube, just because the connection is wonky. Um, he's extraordinarily handsome. Uh, he's also wearing a red flannel button-up. So he is um, yeah, he's why, in why the... Do you, the do, you wanna do, do you want to do... Do you want to see just a quick pic? Yeah, pop, yeah, I'll in. pop yeah, yeah. in just for just, a second. Just okay. a quick make it good. Make it good, because this is the moment. Okay. Here he comes. <laughs> He, here and I'm frozen. <laughs> yeah! Zoom, zoom, oh. zoom, zoom. This is going oh, so goodness. well, guys. Um, oh. So yeah, these movies. Uh, we'll maybe we'll get them later. Uh, but these movies were recommended <laughs> by Rob this week, which is really fun. Uh, uh, the connective tissue is that these are horror movies that are in the holidays. They are uh, Christmas themed. Um, which is great because we already had Krampus. It's like it's apparently yeah. October has been our spooky Christmas. <laughs> Rob, in month. the episode we recorded last week, uh, just before, very close to when uh, we showed your video of uh, your picks for this week, uh, <laughs> I said very loudly that I was pissed the fuck off that our Halloween <laughs> movie marathon had somehow turned into a Christmas movie marathon. <laughs> and then you gave your picks and I was like, well, fuck. <laughs> yeah no i i saw that and i was just like ah you know what i made my choice yeah, yeah. I, i'm I'm, pr- I'm proud of my choice i'm these glad were, you stuck to it yeah they were great choices yeah. I they really were fun enjoyed to these watch movies. um and they're they're gonna be I, i'm 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 excited to talk about these two movies which is always what we want we want movies that are like fun to talk about and i think these movies have a lot to uh, explore. Um, before we move on um, and get into our summaries, I want to quickly just like give a shout out to Rob, and just so people wonder who he is. Rob is a is a friend of ours. He's also a performer. He's an actor and a creator of of theatrical works. A very talented guy. Um, he uh, is uh, generally an enthusiast of horror movies. I, I don't know how would you describe yourself, Rob, in that you're. Uh... Oh, um, for sure, uh, uh, an enthusiast. Um... Uh, I, I look at horror with a childlike wonder, uh, <laughs> a consumer of horror. Um, yeah. Yeah. You feature it like you, you, you attend like fun showings of things, right? Or you did in the before times and you, you have like a, your Instagram <laughs> is connected to horror movies and stuff. And um, yeah, in the long, long ago, yeah. in the long, long, in the before <laughs> four times. And also you have a podcast of your own. Um, you want to give a, a yes. quick shout out of, of your podcast that people know? Yes, uh, I have a podcast uh, with a fellow podcaster named Shauna Edward, uh, and our podcast is called the RIP Podcast, where we dive into all things paranormal, spooky, horror, macabre, you know, all the great things. Ooh, macabre. 
Great macabre. Macabre. <laughs> yeah. You really are an enthusiast. Yeah. Macabre. Yes. I try to use the word macabre <laughs> as much as possible. Just like <laughs> just like ordering like a like a rice bowl from a restaurant. Yeah. yeah. Excuse Can me. I could you could you, more macabre with my uh, with my rice, yeah. please? Yeah. Can I get the Owaka bowl and the and a macabre sprite on the side? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Really so yeah, check out the RIP podcast uh, if you if you in, want to uh, hear about more uh, more spoopy spoopy Boopy, content. Woo. Spoopy, spoopy, <laughs> spoopy. <laughs> Daniel, you missed it. Spoopy, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Sorry, Christ. sorry, I was I was taken aback by Rob's spoopy. I thought it was. <laughs> 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 um, okay, so let's, let's jump into these movies. Um, uh, who who wants to summarize what first? I'm I think either one can go first with this one. Sure, I'll take Black Christmas. Yeah, do it, do it, Sean, do it. Yeah, Black Christmas uh, is a fairly straightforward film uh, about a sorority house of young university students in some, you know, everyman American town, uh, which is actually just the University of Toronto campus, and uh, they are, yeah, uh, they are slowly. Uh, over a few days picked off by someone that in the first scene we see breaking into the attic of their sorority house and he one by one brutally murders them after calling and leaving obscene phone calls with them uh the police are bumbling idiots and (laughs) uh in the end we only have one heroine left alive and she she just barely made it out of there but did they get their man oh I mean, the answer is no. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. It's pretty. <laughs> it's pretty clear. That the only the only clarity that you get at the ending is that she killed her boyfriend, who has yeah. been led to. They want us to think it's him, but it's 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 not. It's Billy. <laughs> Billy. <laughs> yeah. Billy. Billy. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that is pretty much. <laughs> Oh fuck! <laughs> Every fucking time that happened, I was just like, mm, mm, poo, yeah, poo, so oh, no. fucking creepy. It's really effective the uh, the lewd phone calls, um, and how they how they kind of turn up each one. What yeah. I was oh. what I was begging for was when when the boyfriend Pete breaks into the basement was to just have him kind of see that switch from mm-hmm. calming boyfriend to turning on that voice when we can finally see his face. Mm-hmm. That was when I thought it it was him. Um, but of course, we didn't get that because he it wasn't him. It wasn't him. Nope. He was just a different kind of psycho. <laughs> yeah, he was just an over, <laughs> yeah. overly emotional artist. He's an artist, as, yeah. as it was said. Yeah. He's an artist. Yeah. <laughs> He's, yeah. You know. Yeah. Because all all artists just break pianos. <laughs> yeah. And demand yeah, you like, keep their That was like a twenty thousand dollar piano. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he really wants that baby, Sean. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know he does. And the, I want him. <laughs> he's like he he breaks this piano because his his I don't know what his thesis recital didn't go well. Apparently, because we see his. Well, it didn't go well. Yeah, it <laughs> but, didn't go well because also... <laughs> because she doesn't want to keep the baby. Yeah, and he has right. some weird issues with like controlling her womb. It's, yeah. like, it's like part slasher flick, part uh, 1970s reproductive issue. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, film. Roe v. Wade was passed like the year before this movie came out. So. Yeah. Oh, right, right, yeah. right, right. Miranda wondered that. She was like, is this movie trying to be like a uh, like a pro-life, pro-choice um, like commentary? Did I say Roe v. Think- Wade came out? The year yeah, the movie this- Roe v. Wade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Roe v. Wade. That classic uh, Roe v. Wade. Uh, Next week, Kane versus. <laughs> yeah, certainly this conversation was in like the the zeitgeist at this time. Yeah, but I uh, is to that say, the proper word way to use yeah, zeitgeist? I think so. <laughs> I never know how to use that word. <laughs> no, it's I like... think you have to throw in you have to throw in a lot more anti-Semitic terms and like globalist <laughs> words. Then you're okay. <laughs> Easy, Ein. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to say I couldn't tell like his recital was going bad because of his face. He's like he's like he's playing and he's like stressed and sweating. But the music he's well, playing, he's wearing I was a like, jacket and a sweater. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But the music itself, I was like, for all I know, this is how this music is supposed to sound. It sounded yeah. like some weird post Stravinsky era. Like odd. Well, the adjudicators I was like, he... didn't even the adjudicators weren't even giving grimaces or something to show that he was. No, going they were bad. like they a were little bit. Like, Hmm. I think that's just their resting face. Mm-hmm. It might be. It might have been one of those things where, like, maybe he played it fine. 
but he yeah. still was like angry and wanted I want a baby. To... Anyway, you um, wanna... before we keep going, let's get the uh, uh, Dan. If you could, if you could give a little summary of Jack Frost for us. Yeah, I'll I'll do my best. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this movie. So basically, what happens is. Uh, one night, as a uh, a police truck is transporting a known serial killer, Jack Frost, to his execution, um, it collides with another truck carrying um, an acidic chemical that is meant to uh, merge human DNA with inert objects for to ensure the the survival. <laughs> Of the human race uh-huh. uh, in the event of a global <laughs> holocaust. There Nailed it. Is. it. <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> oh man, I would have never, I would have never gone down that road to like <laughs> to describe that movie. You have it's, to. <laughs> that's you, you that's have a key mean, plot point. You <laughs> literally can't leave it out. Key plot point, like later in the film, but like yeah. as like to like pitch it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, but and... let's but let's not forget um, it's that little little girl who's asking for the story with the weird voice. Oh right? yeah! Oh Fuck right! That right. fucking right. scene. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Scary story. Yeah. Right. Tell in the world's oh, stop it. Stop it. Stop in it. the world's <laughs> longest and most painful opening credit sequence ever, we have it is yeah. great. We have like a weird, like yeah. creepy British uncle telling yeah. the story of Jack yeah. Frost to his a scary story. Yes. 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 A happy scary story. Oh, God, Rob. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I'm actually God. loving that we can't see Rob at all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's just this, this disembodied I'm, voice. I'm behind you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. So, so, so these, these yeah. trucks collide, and, uh, and Jack Frost escapes from the truck, but then the truck that, that he was being uh, transported in, but then the truck carrying the acid doesn't explode, but just... Pops, I guess you could say, and shoots this acid all over him and uh, I, kills him he first. <laughs> and then in a weird kind of Powerpuff-esque, Powerpuff Girl-esque <laughs> cartoon <laughs> sequence, we see his DNA merging with the snow uh, as he is transformed into a killer snowman who begins to wreak havoc on a town where the cop that arrested him uh, lives um, as he tries to seek revenge on this cop and, and his family, and what is the else. name of this town? Snow Snowmanton. Snowman. Yeah. Snowmanton. <laughs> Snowmanton. <laughs> but it's but it's it's S N O W M O N. There's not even a W. I think. I think they try and be like pretend that they're being clever. Yeah. I think it's S N O M O N T O N. Whatever. It's ridiculous. Rob, what's your take on this hot issue? <laughs> on the spelling of the yeah, town. I, it's uh isn't it uh s n o w m o n t o n and there it is shit well <laughs> fuck you jack um <laughs> <so>. <laughs> we love each other here and 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 then the movie is 90 minutes of a of a a man in a big white felt suit gruesomely murdering town folk and it was beautiful. <laughs> and 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 raping a woman with his carrot nose. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And an Elizabeth. Yeah. Shannon Elizabeth. In her first role. Yeah, that was pretty evident. Yeah. That and it's was evident. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> her American Pie audition. Yeah, essentially. Oh, oh boy. This so is, these were great picks. These were. I I'd, I'd never heard of Black Christmas. <laughs> nope. And so watching it, I had no idea how to feel, and that was perfect. And Jack Frost, yeah. I'd, I'd heard about a lot. And uh, so finally having a reason to watch it was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Black Christmas, it's like, technically, it's a Canadian film. Like, it's a yeah. Canadian slasher flick. And like, yeah. Andrea I Martin's love it. in there. Yeah. I was yeah, like, exactly. yeah, yeah. As like a, as yeah, a, yeah. As a totally non-comedic role. Yeah. 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 Andrea Martin of like SCTV, uh, yeah. you know, alum. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I, I love I love Black Christmas because it really does kickstart so many slasher flicks. Yeah, and you guys just did Halloween. Yeah, and you can even see from the very beginning of uh, Black Christmas the POV shots, right? Mm-hmm, that are just mm-hmm. like totally yep. inspired that 
opening of uh, Halloween. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and it's Canadian. And of course, like Jack Frost. Uh, I just watched that when I was in the seventh grade at a Halloween <laughs> sleepover. Yeah, and yeah. it was on TV. That is the movie. And it, and it, yeah. And it's that. And it's that movie. Like I was just like, it's been with me for so long. <laughs> <laughs> I needed to talk about it. <laughs> Wait, yeah. there there was a TV station that actually played that movie? Oh, I hell thought, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. It's like late I mean, night. you could you could yeah, late night and if you just even cut out like like a half like one image, it's like not even that gruesome or anything yeah. like it's oh no i wasn't really. i wasn't thinking about anything. it being i wasn't i wasn't thinking that it wouldn't be played because it was gruesome i thought it was just so incredibly indie and low budget that it was more of like a straight to dvd purchased by five people sort of yeah. sort of movie right but these but like movies like jack frost were always played late night on halloween like you'd you mm-hmm. can always find those like weird b indie movies like late yeah. at night my, right. my de- <laughs> connected to this my parents have satellites still because boomers and uh <laughs> they get one of the channels is the public access network from leamington ontario and they don't have the <laughs> rights to show any good programming so they show like movies horror b movies that are in the public domain and some of those films are whack. And this kind of falls into, yeah. even though it's not the public domain, this is one of the, like, I would easily see this playing on that weird channel. Yeah. And I mean, it was successful enough to get a sequel. Oh, yeah. okay. What? I didn't realize. <laughs> I, I read a quote from I mean, the director. I mean, they set up a sequel. I read a quote from the director saying that this movie barely made back its catering budget. Yeah. How... <laughs> How there's a it, there's a line in the credits that says credit cards provided by the director. Yeah. How did it get a sequel? I I don't know, but it did. Oh, that's so good. J- Jack Frost 2 Revenge of the Mutant Killer Snowman. Yeah. And a lot of the characters <laughs> That are would back. be the title. Yeah. 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 Including the douchey FBI officer. He he come, he <laughs> survived his mauling apparently. <laughs> Tell me another scary story. Is that how yeah. it starts? I don't know. I've never seen oh. the sequel, but I, ima- oh. I imagine it should. Like it yeah. should start that way. Next October, we'll do we'll do a sequel versus sequel. We could <laughs> we'll do, do one of the modern Black Christmases versus no, because then it's two schlocks. How how yeah. many how many modern versions of Black Christmas are there? Uh, there's one with Michelle uh, Trachtenberg and Lacey Chabert, I think. And another one, right? like there's like a yeah. remake and kind of like a reboot where they kind of like have the sorority girls being like. We're gonna take our revenge, that kind of thing. Right. Right. Mm. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sidebar. What, Jack. Different movie. Uh, Jack, have you started the timer yet? Oh, wow. Nope. One it's day really, we'll get there. You know, it's, One day know, we'll get there. It is hard <laughs> to keep track of. How many minutes should I leave on it? Like, like, I don't like know. Five. An, like an hour. I'll put an 50. hour is good. So, an for those hour. of you listening who don't know about the timer, we have uh, we're trying to be a little more efficient with our time in this podcast. So, we've given ourselves a <laughs> a time limit now so in about an hour you'll hear an alarm go off uh which will signal the end of our discussion round chime you mean (laughs) (laughs) and uh and then we'll go into our lightning likes and gripes round so we just air out anything else that we didn't say yeah exactly (laughs) (laughs) really quickly list off all the notes we didn't get a chance to talk about so let's 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 dive into a movie (laughs) (laughs) what's that listen listen to this when it comes out (laughs) yeah um (laughs) Let's uh, let's jump into one movie a bit more a bit more in depth with a bit more depth. Like that's I want I think we should yeah. talk about Black Christmas first. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, Andrea Martin in there. Um, I want to give out uh, a shout out to. Uh, it took me a second to recognize her. I was like, oh my god, it's Lois Lane. Margot Kidder. From, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and she's Canadian. great. Who plays um, a wonderful drunk. Wonderful oh drunk, God. as oh, she does her, as Lois Lane, too, if I remember correctly. Is that when um, she's flying in the air with Superman and she <laughs> talk sings that one thing? Yeah. Yeah, Here, beautiful. We fly so high yeah. up in the sky. <laughs> Am I dreaming? Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but she's great. Happy to see her in something else. That was like a Superman was a big part of my childhood, those movies with Christopher Reeve and, and her. Yeah. Um, and also a shout out to who I'm guessing is Zac Efron's dad as the police lieutenant, because oh. that's ex- he looks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ex- exactly that's, like okay. him. Okay. <laughs> that's John. That, that's 
John Saxon. That's John Saxon. Okay. John Saxon. Yeah, and... he have you guys seen have you guys seen uh, Nightmare on Elm Street? No. I haven't. He played no. he oh well, he's the he's the father and another police officer in Nightmare on Elm Street. He has cool. a very very wonderful and long uh b movie and horror movie uh career like he's done so many movies yeah right he's great <clears throat> yeah he's good he's good in this yeah yeah um yeah. so like i don't know what what to get into um first with this movie um because it also feels mrs. like mac it, huh how about mrs mac Mrs. The house, oh the my house god. Oh, yes. <laughs> Holy shit. Yes. The one who just hides yes. bottles of liquor all over the The, the toilet liquor was where where was where uh, I started feeling sorry for her. <laughs> I cringe. Oh no, I she's cringed. great. She's so good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just she plays ham- it perfectly. Hamming up the screen. Um you uh just like a random fact, they actually asked uh Betty Davis to play that role. <laughs> okay. And she said and, 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 <clears throat> And she said no. Oh. <laughs> she said no. But uh, yeah, uh, I love that character. She's so great. The house mother is what we're talking about. Yeah. 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 What exactly is a house mother in a sorority house? Does that just mean like the oldest one there? Does she the, the is no? She, she like, makes the... sure that they their curfew is enforced, and the, it's like an RA in a in a res or something like that. She's there to like make sure moral uh... moral guidelines are being adhered to in this house of of sin. Yeah. And it gotcha. seems yeah, like yeah. she's also like, you know, she's loose. Yeah, she's loose. But yeah. it also seems like she's like <laughs> cooking a bit and getting, you know, taking yeah. care. Of. She's also like Cleaning the landlord. Them, yeah. yeah, she's the manager of the of the sorority house she, itself. She did have that yeah. great the great scene where she's trying to suppress how uh, sinful and horrible she is as a human being. Where well, she's, she's trying to really... hide the the naked peace poster yeah. on the wall. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That was great where uh, yeah. she's swearing at the pr- at her purse and she's like, fucking goddamn shit. Fucking then the guy's head just pops it up in the stairwell. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Next to it. yeah, yeah. Um, just looking for that cat. Looking for that cat. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Um, and then, so the movie, I, I, again, I, I'm going to bring this up maybe now of like how the movie is kind of also three movies. At least it felt like that a little bit. Like in the beginning, I was like, oh, first of all, this movie is about um, Lois Lane. Barb? Barb? Right. I think, right? Yeah, I yeah. thought she was yeah. going to be yeah. our lead. Barbara, yeah. 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 She's like very much like centered on her. She's the one who's like strong and standing up to the people and whatever. And I was like, oh, she's like the leading, the leading character of this. Right? Right. And then yeah. it's like, no, psych. It's actually about this other woman and she's maybe British. And yeah. But like, is she not? I don't know what she is, but she's and, maybe just from like Long Island. And she doesn't understand volume control when speaking yeah. on the phone. Yeah, yeah, I have like three times in my notes. Has this woman ever used a phone before? <laughs> you must scream into it <laughs> as loud and unintelligibly as possible. But then, well, whis- guys, but, come but on, then be whisper. fair. Be fair. It's the 1970s. You have to yell on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally a, a just a string and a tin can. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um. So and then it like flips and it's actually about her and her boyfriend and like a lot about um, the abortion that she wants to get and him being upset yeah. about it. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. the last third of the movie is like, nah, psych again. It's a cop movie and it's actually just going to be an episode of Criminal Minds. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, but the cops are wrong at every turn. Yeah, cops, well, oh as- yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, I kind of like that's kind of a connecting theme with Jack Frost in this movie as well as like all the cops are idiots. <laughs> yeah. I think all movies. That seems to be a thing. Um, it might be, might be society trying to tell police something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I also made a note speak. I mentioned criminal minds that like, I, I made a note that like, I love that this was considered a horror movie then, but it's just like an actually pretty chill episode of like criminal minds now. Yeah. Like if you saw, you could watch this on daytime television. And it would just be like about, you know, a crime show, but a serial killer. I don't know if I'd see this show on daytime television. I actually thought this was a more effective horror movie than a lot of horror movies I see today. Because, yes. of, yeah, I thought it was a, I thought it was a lot creepier. Just those, yeah. just the, the constant returning to the shot of that girl who's been suffocated by the plastic bag and just kind of teetering yeah. in the rocking chair. There's there's subtle really creepy elements in this movie that make it a much more effective horror film than, than 
yeah. a lot, a oh, lot yeah. of what's yeah. out. So sure. I don't know that I would say that it's daytime TV caliber. <clears throat> yeah. But, but I've seen but stuff that, that is borderline like this on some yeah, of those crime like shows. Yeah, like CSI plays right. at like 2 p.m. on TNT. Yeah. And That's what I'm saying. Yeah, there's a sure, lot of... Okay. But yeah. at least the graphicness, this level of graphicness is yeah. on daytime TV. Right. And it, it's also... The creep factor is those prank calls. Like, it's like yeah, the, totally, the, totally. the... Where it's like multiple voices and it's the... Yeah, like... It, where did you put Angus, Billy? Where did you uh, put Angus, Billy? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Well, and uh, then uh, at the very <laughs> end, that uh, the fucking the eye when she sees his eye in the crack Billy's when he's eye. behind the door, and I will and, never forget that. Yeah, and, and he's just whispering, he's like, "I'm Billy, I'm Agnes, Agnes, I'm it's me, Billy." Billy. Oh, oh man, yeah. I was like, "Yo, that is." <laughs> Well, and, and, and the, what makes it scary, what makes the whole thing super, super scary is that it's the whole tapping of the phone, right? Yeah. And, yeah, like, yeah. that process is so crazy. <laughs> like, he has to run around this giant <laughs> yeah. warehouse. I was like, is that how To find, like, the works? light glowing. Yeah. I really, yeah. I really enjoyed that they put the whole, like, mechanical... This, this is... I don't know if that is how it works, but, like, here's a process by which they... the It's the only way and most efficient way they could tap phones in the 70s. So even yeah. though the scene is still, like, we have to keep her on the line, we actually see the reason why they have to keep, keep them yeah. on the line. Because yeah, totally. he has to run across the bank of telephone yeah. lines. <laughs> yeah. To find you them. have to talk longer. You have to talk longer. And she's just like, but I'm really upset. And he's just like, I don't care. You have to talk longer. Like, <laughs> meanwhile, he's just like, squeal like a pig. Yeah. <laughs> and then Jesus. we have the line that I had no idea was coming. The call is coming from inside coming the house. Coming from inside the house. Holy yeah. shit, I didn't realize that was like a Canadian indie murder thriller movie. I was like, that's going to be this movie. Well, so I'm awesome. awesome. Because there's a ton of films that, that have a similar trope. And I was wondering if this was the first one because I googled it and the, the earliest movie that I could find this is the first one this is the first one right because the next one is when a stranger calls and that was 79 oh so yeah that's later yeah, that that is later according so, to numbers like I don't make the rules yeah yeah this is right. 74 right so yeah I thought that was really cool I mean it's all that entire thing is based on like a classic decades old urban urban legend right but yeah it was uh it was dope. Wait, Sean, did you honestly not see that coming though? You didn't realize like, it. I, no, I, I knew that like, oh, the call, he's in the house, he's calling. There's a good chance that this is the movie. But when it happened, I was like, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> and, but I didn't also didn't realize that it happens from like the most incompetent cop. <laughs> Do they like make fun of repeatedly for being a dope? Yeah, what's his name? No, but it wasn't it wasn't him who who finds it out. Oh, but no, he, but he's the one the who one has who to call her and give her right. the message. Right. Who, who, he's got the most like almost East Coast Canadian accent that you can you can find in in a movie. <laughs> right. Yeah, it was it was it was a good turn, and it was like only like you could have missed it though. It it's it goes by really quickly that the lieutenant is like, um, they're they're tapping the phones and they they have two phones in the house, right? And then mm -hmm. the guy's like, oh, any other, any, what about, is there a phone upstairs? And the lieutenant's like really quickly. He's like, yeah, but it's, it's the, the, you know, the land, what's her name? The something mother? The, the, the house, house mother. mother. It's yeah. the house mother's house mother. and it's, and it's, a, it's on a different landline. So it doesn't matter. And I was like, it's like, it's really quick and it's yeah. a really important information because yeah. that's the number that he's been calling from. You realize. Right. But right away, as soon as you hear that line, you're like, oh, so that's the phone he's using. Yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. And like and before I completely forget, like also like as all this is happening, that 13 year old girl is missing. Right. And they they're all yeah. searching for that 13 year old girl. And it's, it takes a while for the police to get off their ass for that one as well. And then they mm -hmm. find her dead in a park. Yeah. And then everybody's just like, oh, shit. And is that like one did of, Billy yeah, yeah. kill her? Are we supposed to assume Billy killed her, too? I I I think so. Hmm. Yeah, I thought it was. Cause isn't the cause the the little girl who they find dead is named Jess, and that's also the name of the pseudo British woman. Yes. Right. They're both named mm. Jess. Oh, I didn't so, hear the girl's name. So I wondered if that was supposed to be a thing to make us think again that it's like the the slighted boyfriend. 
Um, Maybe that he right. that, but it didn't. But the timeline didn't make sense because, like, yeah, because the first murder, even if whether it's the little girl or it's Claire who gets suffocated, they, mm-hmm. I think, they both arguably happen before uh, the boyfriend finds out about um, the abortion stuff. Yeah, I don't know. So yeah, can I, I don't know. It seemed like it was supposed to make us wonder, like, ooh, like it's it's Peter, it's Peter. This right. is how I felt, at least. Can I inquire into maybe maybe some of you know with your extensive policing backgrounds, but <laughs> if um, if someone is reported missing and they live in a sorority house that it has many floors, many rooms, um, is step one not search the whole house, not well, just he, well, individual that's... rooms? Well, but that's the whole thing with this movie is yeah. no one ever searches the whole house, right? Yeah. No one ever goes up into the attic, you know, well, not even spooky. at the end of the movie. The police don't even, you know, there's this like still sorority girls missing, but they don't go up into the attic. Yeah, it's a literal crime scene and they don't they don't clear yeah. the house. Well, well, not only does no. no one go into the attic, nobody from street level just looks in the attic window. <laughs> yeah, you can see her <laughs> walking in the chair in the window, but no one, yeah, no one ever goes. No. Yeah. He's been hiding yeah, inside yeah. the house. Should we like look into how that happened? Nah. <laughs> yeah, and oh, not yeah. only- and, oh, and of- Go ahead. Go ahead, Ross. Yeah, sorry, I was just gonna say, yeah, not yeah, like at the ending of the movie, they just like leave her in the bed. Yeah. <laughs> Every single police officer just leaves you know the house, shuts inf- off all the lights. <laughs> it infuriated me so much. But first they drugged the her, right? This didn't, movie. didn't they sedate her first and then leave? Yeah, yeah, uh, it'll be like it'll be a few yeah. days till she yeah. wakes up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought that was yeah, because they she leave had, like, her in the her. murder house. Yeah. 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 Like where, like literally, it pans over. Like the next room is like a bloody bed from where her friend was murdered. Yeah. And it's like so she's gonna wake up and be here alone. Is that your plan? Because fuck hospitals, right? Like yeah. whatever. And and like forget that everything had happened and like walk into Barb's room and be like, Barb, is it? Oh my god! And then just pass out again. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was the most ridiculous. They just clearly didn't have another location that they could film on, <laughs> or something. So it yeah, was these like, were two then, low budget films. Yeah, exactly. Or no um, budget films and yeah, <laughs> for yeah. Jack Frost. But like the, no one would check the spoopy attic is insane. And it's they have it's like extra there's no like a, one. there's a spoopy rocking horse. There are cobwebs. There's a there's some sort of like toe like like a, a like yeah. a hook that you would use to hoist cargo onto yeah. a ship. Yeah, and, why is that? And what a great death! Ceiling? And yeah, oh, and what a great death with that one, eh? Where they basically just pull her up like a fish up into yeah. the attic. Yeah, that's great. And but leaves are there. is that a thing that is standard in in old houses to have a hook like that? Is yeah, that's your attic uh, hook? You, you don't have an attic hook, <laughs> Jack. We all have an attic hook. You didn't grow up with an attic hook. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, that's for storing your dead bodies. Oh shit. I yeah. guess I'm just for a, collecting your dead. I'm bodies. just a peasant, yeah. I guess. Yeah. You store them in the yeah. rocking chairs. Yeah. I, I was like, yeah, it's a, it was one of the cool cool deaths of the movie, but I was like, I don't understand what this hook is or why <laughs> it's why it's been fastened into the ceiling and and how it functions so well and what, why it's there. <laughs> It's but the house murder. also has yeah, it's for murder. <laughs> but the house also has a spooky basement, so it's a house with yes. it's spooky sandwich. Um, that mm-hmm. when in the end of the movie when she's running away from him and she goes in the basement and it's also like unkempt and dark and spooky. I was like, you really need yeah. to fix up this house, girls. <laughs> it's a, it's a house that in Toronto today, even with the multiple homicides and like likely murder in the attic, would still go for about two point four million dollars. <laughs> oh, easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no question. Yeah. Um, but the first, the first, cause what were the murders? The first murder was the suffocation with the, with the, the bag, the, the, yeah. like the dress bag the suffocation, yeah. Uh, which was good. And then like how, how he got her up the ladder into the attic without anyone noticing is very yeah. impressive. Um, but still like the image of her in the rocking chair. And then when he put the doll in her arm and stuff, you're like, mm-hmm. and it's like rocking her and like making weird noises like that. All that stuff was quite creepy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then hook in the face for the mama. Right. And then yeah. is, is Barb next? She like disappears from yeah. the movie for a long time. And then yeah. it's just her sleeping yeah, in bed. She's... No, I think the, the house mother is next. Yeah, uh, that was the yeah, yeah. Then it was Barb, and then it was the friend with the glasses. You, yeah, but you don't yeah, see, right? The, yeah, yeah, it was the unicorn stab for Barb. Yeah, which was like, 
a a beautifully shot sequence. Yeah, right. Way. It was horrific, but just like the the black backdrop with just the kind of glass menagerie and the hand, the bloody hand coming down, yeah. cut with the with those really nice kind of flowing shots of the kids caroling. I thought it was I thought it was gorgeous. Mm-hmm. With the oh with yeah, the, the kids caroling. Yeah. I, I want to just like just pause to just talk about the kids caroling and how inconvenient. Oh. <laughs> Fuck those kids. Yeah. Fuck but those kids. fucking kids. <laughs> they were really good though. They were like oh, top. Yeah, they were singers. well That's rehearsed. Why. That Fuck was. Them. They went into like their second verse and it was like. The Sean is just angry because well. he's jealous of their skill as singers more so than he is about <laughs> that. But also, this movie was legitimately terrifying, and I mm. watched it on an evening, uh, a weekend evening where I am because of bed bug infestations thoroughly uncomfortable in my own skin there is literally an invader in my home and now and then I watched this film and it was just like uh. the funny thing is I, I didn't find this movie actually the really scary at all if I'm being honest like I didn't find yeah. it to to really like scare me in any way um because you're dead inside yeah. Yeah. You have oh, yeah, no yeah. soul, Jack. No, I. I, yeah, I didn't when you've think killed it was... as many people as I have, this is. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I. I agree. I don't think that it was. It was scary, scary. But I thought that psychologically, it was really unnerving. Yes. I thought that it was really creepy. Mm-hmm. It just Very wasn't creepy. necessarily going to keep me up at night. Scary. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I. I wish they. I wish they had given. Um, um, oh, uh, Andrea Martin's character. Uh, Barb. Uh, uh, no, I think I think Lois Lane was Barb. Barb, no, Claire Phil, was the one first one. Phil, Phyllis. Phil, Phil. Phyllis. Oh, yeah. I wish I wish yeah. that she had gotten. She just like goes into Barb's room and then, mm-hmm. and then that's it. And mm-hmm. it just I don't know. I feel like these movies clearly the thing is like finding the creative ways for the murders as something we'll get into in Jack Frost. It's clearly it seems to be a part of the horror genre. Is like who can think of the next neat way for someone to die. So like you have the unicorn horn stabbing and stuff yeah. um, and the hook in the attic. Like it's just people trying to like one up each other making these horror movies that I was like, oh, that's a missed opportunity. I just, I. Uh... But the door slamming is pretty eerie. Yeah. Yeah. Although it kind of just would have been better as like, like a, a first like a ghost, death. like a ghost slam than yeah. a killer slamming the door. Yeah. Right. Um. Anyways. Also, there's a thing like I liked this movie. I liked it. Um, <laughs> and uh, although there are just things about it that I wish they had cleaned, like again, um, it's kind of three movies in my opinion. It, it feels like three different things. It doesn't feel like the 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 link of the the killer is is clean throughout. Mm. <clears throat> but um, the ending, like we kind of t- touched on, is like it's funny to talk about, but it's also like infuriating to watch as the end of the movie. Um, mm-hmm. And then also stuff like uh, the calling from inside the house thing only works so well. I think one of the last phone calls she gets, he is like yelling his stuff into the phone. Yeah, I was wondering. And I was like, too. she can hear that. Yeah, she can hear that. So. If these old that. houses have great soundproofing, okay? Yeah. <laughs> also, people sneaking around an old house like that, impossible. Too creaky. Well, because they, they do a really good job of, of covering for that early on in the movie because every instance of murder, either no one is home or there's a party yeah. happening or yeah, people yeah. are singing or something to cover up the noise. But you're right. When, when he's screaming into the phone, it's just him upstairs and her downstairs and no other noise. Yeah. And suddenly yeah. it doesn't quite, <clears throat> doesn't quite fly. Right. Yeah. And like, and like that thing, it's like, it's so hard. This is the thing that I've said throughout this month of like, I find it, I enjoy the movie more, even when it's like, and I find it more scary when people do what you feel like you might do. And when they do the opposite, it's just like, ugh. So when he when she gets the call from the cop and she's like, you need to leave the house right now. And then she's like, but why? And then finally he's just like, because he's inside the house, you need to get out now. She's like, ugh, and like drops the phone and like stays inside. And you're like, yo, you are forgetting to leave the house. You are. But would you leave? Okay, so Daniel and I have disappeared to like go <laughs> check on. No, so Daniel is asleep in bed, so we think. And I'm. I'm like, I'm just gonna go check on Daniel. He was he was looking real pukey last time. Mm-hmm. Oh, You're such a good so friend, Sean. I'm just gonna go up and check. And I don't come down for like a weirdly long amount of time. And you get a phone call that says, "Get out quick." Do you not come and rescue our asses? 
I would, I would do what she did probably. Yeah. Like this, like, because her moment when she's at the door and she is screaming to them, being like, please answer me, I was like, actually moved. Like, it was actually mm-hmm. quite powerful. Mm-hmm. That's probably more where I would be. We're feeling that I, I couldn't, I can just run up into blind danger, like, like people are being killed. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Where it's like, so no, please it's answer me. <laughs> I would call yeah. and hope for you to answer me. And if you were like, sure, sure. and yeah. if you were like, Yo, what's up? I'd be like, we need to, <laughs> like, I, but if, if you didn't answer me, I yeah, would have right. to assume that the worst had happened and I would right. wait for fucking backup. Like, well, it's good you to know. know. It's good to know. Yeah, yeah make a mental saying. note of that, Jack. That's, yeah, uh, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Rob, Rob would you save our... us? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. Well, Thanks. we have a new best friend. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. <laughs> I knew I liked you for a reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Okay, no same hesitation. scenario. To, same scenario to you, um, but then you go to the bottom of the stairs with your your fire iron, and then you yep. hear the slow rumble of a chainsaw. Do you do you try and save me, Sean? Um, <laughs> yes, because my skills with a fire a iron are unparalleled. <laughs> Shut up. Okay, moving <laughs> yeah. on. Whatever. <laughs> this is bullshit. This is bullshit. Um, um, s- side note: Did yeah. did an old guy shoot a cop in the dick with a shotgun sure in this movie? Yes, in, in his ass. <laughs> in his ass. Yeah. Oh, it was his ass. Yeah, bird oh, okay. shot. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The the like the comedic police headquarters. While, the guy who like, just laughs. <laughs> yeah, the guy who just laughs was beautiful. That's yeah, all great. he does. He he's laughs great. at the stupid shit that happens in like uh, her giving him fellatio as the uh, the calling area for the number that she <laughs> yeah, gave him. Yeah, and then him not knowing yeah. what fellatio meant, and that guy that was just brilliant. Cutting himself. Yeah, yeah. That whole sequence yeah. was it's something a dirty, gem. isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and he just kills himself again over in the corner. Uh, and then later. What is he gonna like? It's about the bird shot or something like that, right? And the and the lieutenant is like, if you if you laugh right now, like I'm gonna have you demoted. And he's yeah. like, mm. <laughs> 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 it's good. And that that's a character in the credits that's just like laughing cop. Like yeah. that's someone got yeah. cast to do that, which is hilarious. Yeah, and it was great. The the, the it it definitely felt a little like when I watched Room for the first time. And mm-hmm. room is was shot here and has a, a, and it's all pre, it's all Canadian actors I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Um, it I I was watching that and being like oh these are all the theater actors and they're doing this movie and it kind of felt the same way with Black Christmas where I was watching e- even Margot Kidder and Andrea Martin were just like leaving their theater phase of their careers and going towards that so it felt right. a lot like that uh, my first time watching Room too. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, and I, I, I loved Andrea Martin in this again, to say again, I was just like so, partly just proud to see such like a, for anyone, I guess, who's outside of Canada, she is like, she is of importance in like yeah. the, the Canadian like acting world. She's of like um, the second city type. Um, they were second city people, right? It was second yeah, city Canada, CTV. Right? Yeah. Or is that the second city television? Yeah. So, but it was, I feel like a bit of a missed opportunity that she was, I mean, it was, she was still great, um, but like a purely dramatic turn. She was like the very serious, like almost like she seemed heavy in her feelings about yeah. things uh, when she is like one of the goofiest people you'll ever yeah. see. Like sometimes her characters on SCTV were like almost too goofy where you were like, mm-hmm. you are like, past <laughs> past where this works but she was like the fun loving friend in this movie she was still like yeah 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 you tell that yeah. she was still like the happy goofy one whoa. of the group whoa what happened oh well, jack's on fire jack's lighting. on fire spoopy. he just turned on a light and it is flame orange yeah why is this this is way <laughs> different than i had it when i had it on last time you need to white balance um, your camera there man uh, huh? Gilda Radner was actually cast first in her role, and then she yes. couldn't do it because of uh, Saturday Night Live, I think. And, oh wow! Uh, Andre Martin stepped in because they were best friends at the time too. So, how are you blue now, Jack? Look, I turned off my He's camera and turned it back on. He's in wind chill. <laughs> He's in wind chill. The movie Wind Chill. Um, yeah, just because like the sun is setting here. Okay, and I had to turn on another light okay. just to stay lit. Uh, what's our timer at? 
um, 25. So it'd be a good time to transition yeah, over, over to the, the um, arguably better of the two movies. I, yeah, I want to give <laughs> I want to give a shout out though, really quick to um, to the sound work. Uh, the music and stuff, the scoring yes. in um, in Black mm. Christmas. Mm. I thought that was, it was all, and I thought it was interesting that they combined it with seeing a scene of something smashing um, the piano and stuff because the sound effects that you would hear were someone playing on the inside strings of a piano. Not only that, not only that, but he tied weird things to the individual strings. So when he, when you get those glissando and those like hit sounds, the strings mm-hmm. you hear the string vibrate, but then you also hear the sound of whatever is tied to the string vibrating. Right. It gives this, this right. like you can tell it's a piano, but you also don't really know what exactly is going on. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. what I, yeah. What I really loved was when uh, the mother sees her thirteen-year-old daughter who has been killed. And she opens her mouth to scream, and it's the telephone ringing. Ha! Ah. Ooh. Yes. Oh, it's yeah, just like some... a really, it's a really great edit. Like it's like mm. so good. Some of the right. transitions in this movie are are straight up brilliant. I had another example of one. I just lost it in my notes, but uh, yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Just some of the cuts in this film were were genius. Yeah. Also in Jack Frost. Also, I also just want to say one thing because we just did Halloween and. I I made a lot of excuses for Halloween because of the time that it was made. And now seeing this movie that came out five years earlier. Yep. That is a that is a lazy fucking movie compared to Black Christmas. <laughs> but still, yeah. Well, no, because no, Halloween was 78. Six. No. Six. Are you sure? Yeah. Either way. 78. It came, 78. 78. 78? Yeah. Okay, it's I'm a, fucked. It's a, uh, Fuck me. It's, it's of the same era. Like they, but it is earlier. Totally. And you can tell yeah. that Halloween borrowed from this movie clearly yeah 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 but i just remember excusing a lot of things in that film because oh it was the 70s and it was one of the first of its kind and then you see black christmas and you're like oh actually the way better stuff was being made but this this was but black christmas was a canadian film that wasn't released till 1975 in the united states and it was released under a different name uh, because oh. they didn't want it. Well, they didn't want it to be. Oh, they didn't want it to be confused for a black exploitation film. So they called it right. like Silent Night, Terror Night, or something like that. <laughs> right. Oh God. <laughs> Yeah. But I'll I'll say though, like you can not to jump into um, a comparison around two movies that aren't the podcast for this week, but um, compared to something like Halloween, um, Halloween, even though it's not as like well made, I would just say like generally it scared me more. Halloween was more mm. scary. Those scenes, especially early on of, of uh, Michael Myers, just like in his mask, just like standing across the street and like, just like stalking her in the daytime, creep, creep me out right good. Mm. So anyway, whereas okay. I just like, this movie was good, but I didn't find it super effective as like a horror flick. It was more, it ended up being kind of felt like what today would be a cop drama. Right. Or it's like, we got us. It's like, it's like, um, it's like, is Silence of the Lambs a horror movie? It's a movie? thriller. I don't know. It's yeah. a thriller. It's a thriller. Thriller with horror elements. It's yeah. a horror yeah. film. Yeah. I was more scared. It's a horror Black film. Christmas. I was more scared. Black this Christmas is the scariest Halloween. film ever made. Okay, great. I'm going um, on speaking of the saying. scariest film ever made, though, let's yeah. let's transition um, to a movie that doesn't have that doesn't have the polish, which is um, as Black Christmas, which is interesting because <laughs> Black Christmas doesn't have like an insane amount of polish, but compared to Jack Frost, um, but what it doesn't have in technical ability, <laughs> it makes up for in raw creativity. I yeah. will say <laughs> for sure, Jack Frost yeah. does some things with clearly no money that I thought were fun. I was laughing because I was like, in, I, it was like campy in a way that I was enjoying. Um, and I'll start off by giving a shout out to um, like even that voiceover. It's like they were definitely having fun. Like you can tell the performers yeah. Yeah. were having a fun time doing that over top of, I think maybe the only practical credits I think I've ever seen. They like that went on made. like two minutes too long. No, oh, I was eating it up. Oh, I was eating no, it I up. I, I was down. It. No dude, way. No. Never. It was, the poetry was, is great. Yeah. Yeah. It was and so effective. And the fact was, that like yeah. there's like weird like gaslighting where the, the old guy's like, do you want it? He's like, and then they cut off his skin and he ate his brains. Stab and she's him like, in the head. And Uncle, like, I like, don't. He's like, did you want to hear a story oh, or know. not? And she's like, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. And then, they, and then he just keeps going. Yep. Like it's, 
it's funny and it, it's like it does a good job of being a little mini um a little mini skit to set us up being like hey um this movie isn't like a serious movie so like no. <laughs> just so you know off the get-go like don't um don't watch it with that lens. Yeah. And I thought it actually yeah. did that pretty well. So when it opened with the two guys driving in a snowstorm, clearly in a stationary yeah, just a stationary set truck. with the camera yeah. bouncing back and forth <laughs> yeah. and then throwing potato flakes at the windscreen. Yeah. Beautiful. I was like, I was like beautiful. I was like, okay, I know what I'm watching, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and just some terrible acting, but like so stupidly, like this is a movie that hits that like curve up on the parabola where people do stuff that's so bad that you laugh that it's funny for me yeah. at least i want to it seemed that. it seemed like it it fit that really nice niche of like a group of people you get those films that are just a group of people who have been working together a long time and they had this idea for a horror film and they they put it together and it's really like it's a labor of love because they're all in it just to get this stupid fucking film out yep. and it works it works so well well yeah. it's it's amazing what happens when you when you are are free of like studio restrictions, right? This is yeah. this yeah. is what happens when you <laughs> it's all your own money, so you can just do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 the note I wrote is is this filmmaking is adorable. <laughs> it's yeah, like, it's even like down sweet. to the snowman costume. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, especially it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I just you could tell they could t- you could just smell the pride in every single yeah. prop and like spooky yeah. gore sequence that they managed to make in this movie. That, and you, you, yeah. you forgive so much with this movie too, because like you can kind of tell that it's not winter, right? Because like no. all the roads, <laughs> all the sidewalks, yeah. all the driveways, parking lots, not yeah. a single clear drop of snow. Of snow. Yeah. But there's only, yeah, there's only flakes of snow where people are standing. <laughs> like, yeah. like, well, that and, was like my... weird icicles. And it's potato <laughs> yeah. flakes. And, and they like draped, I think yeah. they, they draped white <laughs> yeah. sheets on a hill bes- behind the house to make it yeah. look like there were piles of snow, but it's this clearly yeah. white material. <laughs> Like yeah. Well, sheets. that was yeah. my favorite part of uh, of the the snowman contest scene, yeah. <laughs> yeah. where they have yeah. the wide shot and like the roofs are totally bare, the concrete is totally dry, yeah, and then the summer, guy is yeah, trying to sunny. smush the snow boob on the snowman, yeah. and it's just rocking back and forth. Like it's clearly just a styrofoam yeah. model yeah. of a snowman. <laughs> it's whatever whoever had it in their garage, yeah. some weird material that was like flexible like that, and they just threw together these these mannequins of snowmen. Yeah, yeah, but it's but hilarious. Even when you but when he is turned into the snowman like that sequence of melting flesh yes. and all that yes. sort of stuff it's great it's, it's so great. good it's really good yeah. and later and later yeah. when he gets the cuz cuz the son in the first part of the film he makes special oatmeal for his father that you think is just really chocolatey sweet oatmeal but later you find out he put antifreeze in it because he didn't want his dad to get cold and yeah does that kid have a fucking learning disability what is up yeah. with no, that i i i wrote down son is an idiot yeah. <laughs> I, thought was, I thought they were setting up that salt was going to be the thing the guys yeah, coming yeah me too and i, I too. thought the kid had put I a bunch of down. salt which is common in baking people over salt yeah. it no no no, no it, he, he was gonna kill fucking... his father. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and when when the snowman gets the oatmeal on his face and half his face melts away, that model is super cool. That, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And whatever they built for that, super cool. And then he continually melts. There's a lot of melting. Jack Jack Frost does a lot of melting in this movie, both of uh, fleshy kind and snow yeah. kind. And yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. I was confused though when, because when the antifreeze starts to melt his face. It seems like this. He, it seems like he's bleeding, and that he now suddenly has yeah. organs that are pulsing. So, is the idea that the antifreeze is suddenly turning him back into a human? I think it's nope. just like he is now a person fused with snow, and and it's like it's like destroying the person parts of him, whereas like usually people were only destroying the snow parts of him. Is how I don't know. There's no real. I, I, it's really hard to say. The science in this movie is quite complex. <laughs> quote, uh, that was my science. favorite line. Yeah. The cops were like, "Clearly, you're not a man of science." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when he's just like, "I've discovered it. The soul. It's chemical." You know, like it's, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's just like, and what proof of that? Because <laughs> he's a snowman. <laughs> And can anyone help me with that actor, the guy who plays the scientist? I recognize him from something. Can anyone help me? Or do we have to look it up? Dan's like, I don't know. I'm on it. I'm on it. Daniel's on it. it. 
Okay, because I recognized him, and I was like, "Why do hey, I?" Hey, hey, how's it going? <laughs> um, um, but th- there was yeah. a lot of stuff in this movie that that also like made me laugh. Like it 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 wasn't super again super scary. Like one thing I could watch it and enjoy it because anytime that someone was killed, right. I was mostly laughing. Yeah. Um, because it would be like this, like we mentioned, like it's this big, um, clearly not snow. Um, kind of prop i don't think someone was in it most of the time ever i think it was just like a prop thing that they had of jack right. frost and then whenever he killed someone mostly it would cut to like this like elongated oven mitt yeah reaching out and like and like <laughs> hitting like hitting someone on the face and then being like ah! and then like an axe being shoved down their throat the funniest thing right. to me Yo, okay, was, yeah you go, you know, go ahead rob yeah I was just gonna. <laughs> I was just gonna say <laughs> the axe down the throat. Uh, I, yeah. yeah, I just yeah. Like I wanna, I wanna talk about some of these death scenes. You know, like yes. some of these are so good. Let's compare like, death scenes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the Christmas tree death. Like Best one. All oh, that's race. All that's oh. involved in that. She one. always wanted to be a, an angel on a tree. Yep. Yeah, she, yeah, and he just <laughs> smashes her face into all those ornaments. <laughs> and the like, shot really that, hard. That it's clearly a, a dummy with her with a wig on it that they're putting into the ornaments and wiggling around really fast. It was <laughs> it fucking killed me? It was so yeah. funny. And then it would cut back to her being pulled up again with more ornaments in her face, and then it was yeah. back to the dummy like wiggle wiggle wiggle. I, yeah. I was watching that part with headphones on, and Aaron was sitting on the corner of the couch do, working at work. And uh, she just saw the visuals of that and was also laughing for that scene and had no idea of the context of, this, <laughs> of the film. Yeah, yeah. So, every death is a is gory, but a little bit funny. Yeah. Oh, I mean, every I'm going to argue, but one, which is the in the '90s, that one was also funny. I know. Yeah. But the the now at least very yeah. disturbing. What I kind of realized later on, I was like, was a was a rape with a carrot? Yeah. When yeah, he, he literally w- rapes her right. to death. Yeah, and then she well, carrot. she falls onto the bathroom floor and hits her head, is I think actually how she dies, right? Or is he been hitting her head uh, he's against smashed, the wall? Oh, he's been smashing her, against, her the wall. against the wall. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that scene uh is is fucked. Like, but that like that looks like something you would have seen in like the old scary movies. Yeah. And we know she you survives because she's an American pie two years later. So Right. Yeah. <laughs> but even um, though like yeah, the outcome's quite quite uh disturbing, but uh it's completely but it's quite imaginative to yeah. like that she's like in a tub and all of a sudden yes. she's just like, Oh, don't pour cold water in the tub and like Yeah. Open yeah, he just grows out <laughs> of the tub coke, and just her arms are inside of him. <laughs> surround and, her. <laughs> my my favorite part of that yeah. scene too is yeah, the fact yeah. that they're trying to they're trying to make the bathtub scene sexy by just gratuitous, mm-hmm. gratuitously showing panning shots of her knees in the water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They like did yeah. they weren't gonna show actual nudity. Yeah. Which was so funny. Y- y- yeah. Um but yeah, there was that was a ridiculous murder. The the guy just gets killed because he tries to ice pick Jack Frost, and then he Jack Frost turns out can shoot icicles. Yeah, he discovers was, his power in that moment. Yeah, and that was actually pretty yeah. good, pretty effective. It like shoots through him, and then like the shot of it, like the bloody side, like through the door, was like okay, like that. That's this is working. This is pretty effective, yeah. and it looked like they actually had. I couldn't tell if those things were actually made of ice or not. Like it kind of looks like they, like they looked like ice, which is cool. Yeah. Um, and then, now, did you guys notice the? Did you guys notice the man with the red hood, the red uh, cap on? Okay, so no. you know how she's being killed in the bathtub, and her arms going, and all of a sudden there's a guy outside, and he just waves at the window. Oh, oh yes. that guy, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And did you kind of follow him through the movie? He keeps popping up now and again. Like at no. one point, everybody's screaming and running and going to the like. What, is he the, the is he the one guy? Is he the one he guy that leaves? Out and he, okay. Oh, that guy! I was I That's made a note of like, guy. who the fuck yeah. is this guy just leaving the yeah. community center? So right? Yeah, so he leaves the community center with the marshmallows. He has marshmallows Ooh. on a stick that he's eating. Yeah, and then like at the very end, on this huge branch. Yeah, and at the very end, where they're all putting the antifreeze into the hole, you can see him in the background putting antifreeze into his car. So there's always this guy in this red <laughs> cap, always in the background. <laughs> it's a little joke that oh. I, just, I just got. This oh. film keeps on giving. 
<laughs> it has so many good little jokes. Yeah. Like even when they they find the first old yeah. old old man Hubbard or whatever, who they yeah. find yeah. frozen, and they're they're talking, and it's it's funny because they're playing it totally straight. Like actually doing the scene well, where the three cops yeah. are yeah. talking, and it's him. You see the back of this guy's yeah. head rocking and rocking still. Yeah, and it was perfect because Miranda finally goes, "Why is he rocking?" And then, like a second later, <laughs> yeah, the man. lieutenant is like, "Hey, take your foot off the rocking chair." Yeah. And then we were like, "Oh!" <laughs> like, <laughs> and then, and they they duplicate that shot after uh, Billy's mom is murdered with a Christmas tree, and it's yeah. the three co- it's the perspective of them looking down at her yeah. at her corpse, and I forget. Oh, oh. I forget what happens. Oh no, it's outside and they're and they're having a uh, a talk. And then just as that conversation ends, her the Christmas tree with her corpse still attached to it is yeah. marched through the background of it. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah, it, 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 these three cops are like the three stooges. If like yeah. the main sheriff, like the main sheriff has PTSD. So if one of the stooges had PTSD, yeah, and one of them dies, right? He's also a death. He gets Deputy run over. Chris Pullman is uh, he- murdered. In the line of action, yeah, not Chris. Yeah, uh, the stop sign. Yeah, yeah, the stop yeah. sign. But oh, right. Yeah, I was. Run we over. were like, I was wondering how he was going to get him with the stop sign, you know. But then, just runs him over. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah, runs him over. Uh, yeah. There were some other really funny, funny. Um, oh, and also the fact that they, <laughs> there's like little things too. Of like, there's also the kid who gets killed by the sled. Yes. Right, he was like teasing Billy. the son of the sheriff. Oh yes, and no uh, and then the Jack Frost trips him, and so he falls. And then his friend who's sledding sleds over him, which causes him to be decapitated yeah. uh, in front of all their faces. And then there's like all these super weird scenes with that. That family has the weirdest plot line in this movie but then they're like taking the body bag away and then a cop is just carrying the head in a clear <laughs> plastic bag <laughs> yeah. i was waiting for it i was looking so closely because i saw i saw the them traipsed with the corpse and i was like the head's coming the head's coming the head's there it is there it is <laughs> but that family is totally messed up because they 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 all die, right? That's they're yeah. the family that gets it the worst yeah. for some yeah. reason. Why yeah. does he target that family? Why doesn't he just go straight for? I mean, I'm looking for a logical through line in this movie that is just fun. <laughs> uh, but like, why doesn't he just go straight for the sheriff for Sheriff Tyler's family? He is it because Billy calls the snowman ugly, is stupid or or whatever before, and so it like it must be that yeah that he like yeah. takes it out against against the kid and his family because otherwise that doesn't make any sense and i think he it's just loves the kill he, just loves he does killing. he does he, is a... he loves killing i also found it interesting that that kid's family no one except the dad actually cared that the kid had died like yeah. the dad, oh, yeah. the dad no, freaked like the, out exactly but like the mom just wants to drink her tea and shannon elizabeth just wants to go and get She's laid in the sheriff's still house so and, horny you know, still yes. so horny this is the second movie we watched this month that involves randomly uh invading another person's home to have sex <laughs> halloween yeah. was the oh, first yeah. one right halloween was the first yeah right yeah um but speaking yeah. of of shannon elizabeth's character wanting to have sex that sequence of them taking off their layers it's also, so great. a genuine laugh that is yeah. so funny, yeah. and like especially to us Canadians who get chilly winters, I was like, "Yo, that is a that is a good joke," yeah. and it was done well. And the music was funny; like it was it was great. And the they were music, still yeah. the music throughout like this entire piece was brilliant. And oh, oh yeah, the rock and roll guitar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the metal that would kick in for like these non-metal sequences. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. they also they also had warped versions of every single Christmas Carol. There was a, a sexy Twelve Days of Christmas. That that's what's playing while they're stripping off. There's a right. like bow, bow, wow, 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 wow. There there was so much thought put into the musicality of each scene and how to invert these beloved Christmas carols to make them demonic. Mm. It, 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 which is, it just added to me realizing that this is a, like a labor of love for the creators of this, uh, this, this film and it shows. Yeah. 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 A labor of love, just like all around. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they managed to get a couple like pretty cool shots there. And again, like sometimes they'd, they'd hit, they'd hit kind of pay dirt a little bit. I made a I made a note and then a follow up note where there's a shot where um there the scientist is like sticking a MacGuffin into the water to to check 
and he's scanning it and it's like the the lens is on the other side of the water as it's like rippling and it's actually a pretty cool like underwater Mm -hmm. shot and then they keep on that shot though for like five minutes through a whole conversation and i was like oh okay yeah you you realize that this is kind of cool and you wouldn't get away from it okay they needed to get as much footage as possible yeah in that they couldn't afford the film that they were shooting on so they they picked one shot and just stuck on it (laughs) they had run out of catering three weeks ago and everyone was starving (laughs) yeah (laughs) um yeah there's uh also like shout out to lines that made me laugh because the whole the whole plot the the side plot of the fbi uh secret team that has come to like stop jack frost the scientist and that one guy that one guy is uh, agent charming agent agent charming is manning manning no no was it i think it was agent manners agent manners 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 um He's pretty terrible, but he has some lines that are hilarious. One that I wrote down was, um, I forget who he's referring to, but he goes, he's like, he's like, you know, get this guy out of here. He goes, he's a danger for the public and a possible hindrance to my investigation. Oh, he, and he slugs him hard too. (laughs) That was a beautiful moment. Yeah, when he punches him. That punch in the face. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Such a good punch. (laughs) Um, one of my favorite lines is when uh, Shannon Elizabeth is trying to go out the night that her brother has died and her dad just grabs her by the shoulders and is like, do not forsake the Lord's name in this house, little girl. And then she's like, the Lord forsook this house long ago and then like storms out. Yeah. <laughs> but but no, you, you spoke it too well. You spoke it with a, with, with a meaning. She says it more like, the Lord forsook this house so long ago. And long then ago. Walks out. That's true. Yeah. That's true. She's giving her too she's much been credit. In so many, she's been so many movies. Yeah. Um, also, and the entire interaction between the the sheriff and Billy's parents when they're mm. carting the bar- the body out, <laughs> and the dad's freaking out, and the and the sheriff is just like, "Why don't you just go home and we'll talk about this tomorrow?" <laughs> yeah. It's like, and then I can't. And then later- I have to bury my son, and then and then and then his wife comes up, and he's like, and she's like, "I'm sorry, he's usually not this short tempered. I don't know what's gotten into him." <laughs> I don't, I don't know what makes today any different. Uh, like every character in this movie is truly ridiculous. There's also the um, the his assistant at the police station, the woman, like the secretary who always the is sweet like, Afro sweater. What's her name? Marla. Marla. And she does sometimes like they cut to her just so she can like make a face. She's like yeah, like a very like like actually like Andrea Martin type like character. Um, and she was, but she made me laugh because it was it was so stupid. Um, and there's like they're teasing a whole thing that like the other police officer was in love with her, and she kept trying to get her on go on dates. That was a whole thing. And then, right, right, and right. And then, right. and then when they both can't get into the community center, she's like, "How far is like where's your place?" And he's like, "Ooh," because they're gonna go hide there slash I do know, it. Out. So do it. Rob, as as a horror film enthusiast which i don't think any of the three of us can claim to be um what between black christmas and jack frost so we have black christmas which is trying to be legitimately scary and trying to trying to like do something new with the genre and jack frost which is sending up the tropes and is and is just schlocky in the best possible way as a horror enthusiast which is more drawing to you what do you look for when you're trying to get your halloween shock Ooh, that's a really good question because it, uh, yeah, no, yeah, it's really, uh, I mean, it depends on my mood, right? Like, uh, you know, too much of Black Christmas can make you feel a little dark and sad sometimes and you need a little Jack Frost. Right. So like, <laughs> uh, like I, I really appreciate a good, solid, well-filmed horror movie, um, but I love blood and guts and gore and stupidity. Right. Like, yeah, like uh, I love the the meshing of of comedy and horror. I think that's where I sit comfortably okay. most times. Um, I mean, this is sort of a back and forth like answer. <laughs> like, I can't, it's hard to answer this <laughs> it's question. Okay. We're, we're all fence uh, sitters uh, in some way. Yeah, I'm a bit of a fence sitter when it comes to this. <laughs> um, uh. 
but I, I think I, you know, I think I, I love, I love the freedom and fun and and naivete and stupidity of something like a Jack Frost. Mm. Right. And there's plenty of that. Yeah. In Jack Frost. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I um, like that they do it with no money. And I'm used to not having money to work with. <laughs> yeah. Well, like yeah. How think... they how they filmed the car crash was again, like I said, it was just like adorable. They just spun the camera. <laughs> yeah. Well, first they had that oh, really oh, slow yeah. motion, <laughs> the really slow shot of the bumpers just kissing. Just the... oh shit! Oh, and the noise. Oh. That's it. There's our alarm. Oh. Dude. Oh, there, there it is. There okay. we go. Um, that's the that, timer. That you know what that means. The discussion round. Um, oh, but yeah, you oh. can finish that point though. The bumpers touching. I was like, oh, that yeah. was, that was them. It's, yeah, it's perfect. And it's the sound too, the bing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that is our timer though. So we're going to, we can, we can air any other thoughts that we wanted to ha say in our lightning round segment, likes and grapes. I keep saying lightning, lightning round. So <laughs> we're, yeah. we're going to, we're going to get faster and faster with our yeah. lightning round, likes and grapes. Um, I'll say for Jack Frost, I only had a couple other things that I, I would say of like he gripe types type things. Um, again, the fact that the ending is just the guy who played the sheriff, like in the back of that pickup truck with some water punching just inanimate objects and trying to sell a scene. Uh, good job, buddy. That I uh, like, you know, good, good, good job. Um, the fact that when he's trying to escape from Jack Frost in like the inn and it's a bunch of sounds of people like doing like having sex and whipping each other in each of the rooms and stuff was funny. So that's a like. Um, <laughs> uh, the other like that I'll mention is the fact that when the mom is like, she's like chopping vegetables and then she just like puts them into like, right, just like unboiled water. <laughs> she just like to make a and, soup. And, and she was chopping that celery way too big. Way too big, and then it's just puts it say. in water <laughs> as though that's cooking, and I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. Um, my big, big gripe was the entire fucking hallway scene in the in the in the jail and reaching for the keys. What the fuck was oh, that? That, yeah. was, that was rough. <laughs> oh my god! It was like not silly enough. It was just too stupid. Um, that I I I was just like I was getting so pissed off at that whole sequence. That was a big gripe for me. So yeah, those are my likes and gripes for Jack Frost. Cool. Uh, I'll go next. I only have a few of them. Uh, my main gripe is this: the kid who plays the sheriff's son, maybe the worst <laughs> actor ever. I did like the shot Aww. of the sheriff like baptizing him in anti in anti frost. <laughs> yeah, at the end. Yeah. The that was fun. Um, there's a really cool shot. It's a, like a POV shot from Jack Frost as he's coming like rising up from water into the snowman when they're in the police station. I don't know if you remember that, but yeah. Uh, but that was a like I liked the blow dryer sequence when like all when like one by one all the townspeople start popping into the frame with the blow dryers to like melt yeah. Jack Frost into the furnace. <laughs> and he blesses him with the the priest blesses him with the hair dryer too. Yeah, yeah. Um this oh, uh when he comes out wearing the scientist's skin, when Jack Frost like I couldn't I don't know if he had oh, like yeah. And I didn't know if he was wearing his. Like, he was wearing his skin essentially, right? Because then he like pukes yeah. him out. He yeah. filled him like the snow was full in his body, and then right. he he vomited it all out in that hilarious foam sequence. <laughs> 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 it's like clearly a hose behind the side of his head. <laughs> um, I just have uh, I have sweet pipe. Oh, because Billy's dad is smoking a, a nice a nice pipe outside. I like that. Um, <laughs> This is, more, takes. this is more of a, a question than a like or a gripe. Did they try to imply that the that the doctor of the town knew that it was like a, a beast and not a person? Because they have that one line yeah. where he's like, oh, it yeah. must be huge. And then should the sheriff's like, it. Yeah. Don't you mean he I or think, whatever? Yeah. Just yeah. that like he sensed that something that like this could only be done by something that wasn't human. Right. Um, right. Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's it for me. For oh no, and and my favorite line of the movie, which is, I hope somebody remembered to put the cat out. Yes, I wrote that down too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no uh, context needed. None. 
I'll I'll go I'll go next. Uh, my my likes for Jack Frost. Uh, all the melting and 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 snow formation stuff, pretty cool. Uh, it was it was done to budget, but it's a neat neat thing to watch. Uh, the we already covered this, but <laughs> the the corpse rocking in the rocking chair and uh, which I loved, and then when they addressed it in the scene, I loved even more. So mm-hmm. way to go, everyone. Uh, the three cop shots that I mentioned whenever they're all in in frame together, fucking beautiful. Uh, the the police tape cut out snowmen that are in the police office all around the doors. Really great decorative touch. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Uh, the coroner was, uh, or the doctor was uh, a brilliant addition to every scene because he knew exactly what he had to do for every scene and he executed it perfectly. <laughs> um, the punch uh, I thought was, it, it, it was cathartic. It was really cathartic to watch that guy get, get fucking punched in the face real mm-hmm. hard. Mm-hmm. It was great. Uh, and then in the credits, all credit cards provided by the director. Love that. D- uh, gripes. Gripes with this film. Ugh. Uh, the little girl voice. And I don't hate it because it was bad. I hate it because it will haunt me for the rest of my life. Just, it was clearly like a fully grown hairy dude that they pitch controlled to uh, sound like a girl. <laughs> Thoroughly disturbing. Um I made special, which is what the son keeps saying about like the oatmeal <laughs> and the gingerbread cookies is a thoroughly disturbing sentence. I made special. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> uh, I also put the punch in my gripes because it was really poorly done. Uh, it, it was shot bad, but it was very cathartic. And uh, oh, the pipe burst! The, the, having actually the pipe be just like bursting under the under her her kitchen sink when she goes back, I, I thought was kind of an annoying redirect. But uh, that's just me. Rob, do you have likes and gripes? I I think I have a few. I definitely have likes. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> certainly, there's gripes. But uh, okay, I'll start with the likes. Um, I love how. Uh, all the kind of uh, PTSD flashbacks he has where yeah. he, he, after like catching him, he's always just like, I'm going to kill you. I'll find a way. I'll find a way. There's so many of those. <laughs> and it just like keeps popping up. There's so many. He's driving. He's sitting, having a cup of coffee. His son's making him shitty food. I'll find a way. Yeah. Um, I like when they're standing outside the community center and it's just, it's, it's literally the cameraman just shaking the camera. And one of them's just like, what is that? Some kind of stampede? And no, it's just like a giant snowball. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I enjoy. Uh, <laughs> Bison stampeding uh, yeah. over the hill? Yeah, and he has like a couple, like uh, Jack Frost has a couple good lines. Like, mm-hmm. you know, when they ask who's out there, he says, well, it ain't fucking frosty <laughs> i like that yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh what's the other one when he's blowing up he comes out and he's all like deformed he says look ma i'm picasso <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh gripes uh yeah they didn't kill that kid uh his son um, he, he needed to go. <laughs> like I feel like, 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 like he was kind of the worst right off the bat. Um, yeah, I could have, I could have used a few more Christmas deaths. You know that Christmas yeah. tree was so good. It was, it was yeah. such a great Christmas themed death, and I, I, I needed one more like Yule tide. Totally. Burner. Like it shouldn't have been like someone being, getting run over. I thought getting run over was lame for the movie. It didn't. It didn't read yeah, for me. Yeah, like they should have been fed down the chimney while it was still there was still fire. Or yeah, something like, like that. on fire. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Something like that. Maybe or, it's in Jack Frost too. Maybe. Mm. Maybe. Um, also, well, great. I just looked up uh, for us anyway. But the guy who plays the scientist guy, his name is Rob LaBelle. He's also in Watchmen. Like the movie. Oh yeah, I looked uh, that up like before. twenty minutes ago. I forgot oh, to tell you. You didn't say anything about it. Yeah. Sorry. Um. So that's maybe where I recognize. I feel like I recognize him from some silly sh- TV show that I watched as a kid or something. I though. think anyway. he's been in like a hundred things. Like he's, he's been in like those... a million things. Yeah. Is the thing. Um, I think it's like a billion things to be honest. I think he's been yeah. in everything ever made. Oh, yeah. that's where I recognize him from. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. That's yeah. it. Uh, but Black Christmas, some likes and grapes. Um, a, a grape, it, it wasn't It wasn't bad enough for me to enjoy her like weird British accent. No, couldn't do it. That was, ended up being a grape for me. Oh, I thought it was charming. Um, yeah, me too. I liked, um, I thought Zac Efron's dad was very handsome and good. So that was a like. Yep. Um, the, uh, the convenient unicorn knife mm-hmm. was a likey grape. I, I both mm-hmm. liked it and griped it. But I, I thought it was fun. Um, the the creepy eye I already mentioned, uh, and then the just the stuff again. Like I just I already said it already, and I'm, I'm not going to dive into it. But just like the fact that they leave her in the house and no one checks the attic, or just like big old annoying things that kind of were were sour at the end of the movie for me. If I'm being honest, that I I, I were big grapes right at the ending. That's it though. Cool. Uh, mine are. Um, my first gripe was the, the speaker on that phone in the first phone call where the, she's like holding it up for the entire group to listen to while he's whispering his horrible <laughs> things was way too loud. I didn't buy it. <laughs> Fuck that shit. There's music playing in the background. No one's hearing what that guy is saying on the phone. Uh, I loved grumpy crass Santa at the, the benefit at the sorority house for the, <laughs> the underprivileged kids. Oh Yeah. The one calling them little bastards. Oh yeah, and... yeah, that was funny. Although the fact that they get, they were Miranda was like, "Are they talking to each other in this scene?" They were like having a conversation like past other people that weren't here. Anyway, it was, it was well, odd. they were they were talking to each other, but like in the presence of kids who were way too young to hear language like that, which I yeah, appreciated. Yeah. yeah. Um, I there was one split lens diopter shot in this movie, and I don't know if you guys caught it, but I loved it. <laughs> um, which I was liked... it? <laughs> Oh, it's when uh, one of the older, it's, there's a phone call happening and it's like an older guy in the sorority house and then there's like the girls in the background. I forget what the shot is exactly. Right. I just remember seeing it and being like, the guys are going to okay. love this. Um, okay. <laughs> I liked the old school hockey goalie masks. It reminds me of a time <laughs> when hockey was what it should be. Um, yeah. What? 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 And men we'll were men. And men, yeah, were, men, men yeah, exactly. were men. Yeah. Um, <laughs> gripe. There's a killer on the loose and someone is stalking you. You're not going to answer the door to somebody holding a shotgun. I mean. Gripe. Yes. I, I agree with that. That's it. And cool. the gripe. Uh, my likes. My likes for Black Christmas. Uh. Uh, for some reason, I wrote shouty phone girl down because I didn't know Jess was her name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think I like, I like shouty phoning off the top because it was charming and like individual. But then when it just was shouty phoning throughout the rest of the film, I think it moved over to the gripes. But when it's, you realize it's, it's like dope. a tick and not just like a, like a one off. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, she, she took this film on because her psychic told her that she would uh, be in a film that is shot in Canada and is very successful. So when she saw that this film was shot in Canada, she just went and did it. I think we should look up her psychic and, and yeah, really ask her some questions. But Wait, is that a real story? Yes, indeed. Shut up. Yeah, they made Wait. fun of her a lot about her. Like What? <laughs> she's a very spiritual person. Let's this just is the, throw, the main? Put that down. How the did main this British not woman? come up yes, earlier yeah. in, in uh, this conversation? I don't know. Like People can be what they want to be, but uh, but like that's why she took no. this 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 film, uh, <sighs> because her psychic told her to. And apparently she got a lot of guff from the other actors on set for uh, being so like <laughs> spiritual. Good. Yeah. Um, the piano string soundtrack, the fucking phenomenal uh ho 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 fuck great line Um, (laughs) the entirety of barb's drunkenness fantastic way to go margot kidder uh the joy to the world bells behind the couple talk oh when they're having their i think oh wait oh yeah when they're having their talk about the abortion there's a, a church bell in the background that's going on during the whole conversation and it's joy to the world, but they're having this just horrifying depressing talk. And that was, <laughs> that was a really cool, that was a really cool moment. Uh, gripes, uh, the toilet hooch I put, um, and Mrs. Mac continually screaming Claude, 
was grating on every fabric of my being. Uh, choir of kids get off my doorstep, I put, and uh, <laughs> inept cops. And that's it. Over to Rob. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Uh, likes. I like how all the characters have a fur jacket. <laughs> yeah, they did, did you know <laughs> all of them are wearing fur jackets? One of them, the, the the guy's boy, the girl's boyfriend that knows all the cops by name. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. not see Rob Stark whenever I saw <laughs> him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I love the creepy Christmas tree that they have in their house. It yeah. just like always seems almost like out of phase. Like it's just like it's strange the tree that they have in their in their home. Uh, I like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, um, Mainly set dressing is what you're saying. Is what you're yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love the art I like direction that. of this movie. I thought they had a nice couch in their living room. <laughs> um, gripes. I-, I thought the Peter character was a total dick. I just can't. I can't yeah. handle him. Yeah. That's the boyfriend. Like I just. Yeah. Uh, even if he's a nice person in real life, I, I feel like I wouldn't like him. Oh, yeah. Agree. <laughs> like the, the actor himself. No, no, none of us like the guy who like, tells I don't his like, girlfriend I don't that like her his... body is his property. Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. like his character, and I don't like the actor. Yeah. And what he says. And I'm just... I... And what he says, and <laughs> yeah. how he goes about his And how he moves, his and his face. <laughs> yeah, fuck... Him. <laughs> oh, great. oh, my clock's going off. <laughs> Uh-oh. Is this... Uh, wait, do you have another likes and gripes that you have to go do now? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys, if we could wrap this up. <laughs> well, actually, well, let's. Let's move on, shall we? So let's get, in, let's get into our rating system. Um, how it works uh, is that we got five categories. We have looks good, a sounds good, acts good, the story good. <laughs> and uh rewatchability uh which is like a <laughs> like a like if you had to a would you rather Never like a, an enjoy a bit which one did you enjoy more would you come <laughs> back to soon and just mm, have a good time with which uh, would you like playing at your graduation if you could redo the year uh, your 18th year of being yeah exactly these are the examples you might think of um and so whichever movie emerges with uh three or more of those five categories is declared the citizen citizen can of the week um we'll see what happens when we have four people it means there's potential for like you have a draw eyes and stuff and categories but and we'll, this one might actually be kind of tight i'm this i don't one's know gonna be neat so yeah. let's let's talk about let's talk about looks um yeah so my, I'm gonna I'm gonna start in with with a controversial opinion potentially, Uh-oh. which is that I'm giving my vote to Jack Frost for looks, mm-hmm. um, because like I said from the beginning, this movie it does not have like like Black Christmas is clean like it's a clean when you when you watch it it's a clean movie cinema like 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 film like looking at it like you know what I mean, um, but but Jack Frost does so much with so little and is so creative and so silly and fun like it just it's clearly for our enjoyment um their like silliness that i actually enjoy like i i would give more points to that than just a a, like a cleanly shot like movie that's how i feel about it yeah i don't know it's it's really tricky because there's a lot of really creative and fun shots in Jack Frost, but the majority mm-hmm. of it looks like it was shot on a handy cam. Correct. Or, and then you have Black Christmas, which is, yeah, like you say, like a cleaner movie, but there are some really memorable shots. And But just throughout the cinematography is is much more engaging and way more interesting. So, ah, I don't know, because I had, I had more fun watching Jack Frost, for sure. So. Yeah. I'm just. I'm gonna. I, I, I'm gonna fight you a bit and say I don't know how much of Black Christmas is gonna be that memorable for me, visually speaking. If I'm being honest, some things for sure, but I'm gonna remember a lot of stuff from Jack Frost in those visuals. Yeah, I don't know. I would. I. I mean, I just watched Black Christmas like right before we hopped on this thing, so I think that it's also fresh in my mind. Ah, I don't know. Someone else go. Come back to me, Rob. What do you think? Uh. I have to say, when it comes to looks, it's 
it's Black Christmas for me. Mm. Um, and I, I just think there's just so many shots that have inspired so many movies I love mm-hmm. down the road. There's so many of those POV shots. There's those shots with her in the rocking chair. Um, yeah. It's him running through that giant warehouse looking for the tap, right, for her phone. It's just yeah. these, like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's beautiful, that's the eye. beautiful, te- the eye, the eye in the yeah, crack the of eye. the door, yeah. um, which is just, like, so frightening and just sits with me. Um, it's just more iconic, I think. I, I'm going to have to, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to say, yeah, for sure, uh, Black Christmas for looks. Yeah. Fair points. And Sean? I'm... I'm going to agree with Rob. Um, on the whole, Black Christmas, the the imagery that hit me over those few hours, while I thoroughly enjoyed the uh, uh, bring-your-own-movie uh, atmosphere to Jack Frost, um, yeah, Black Christmas had a real keen visual eye, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Black Christmas. Fair enough. Well, Dan? Yeah, Rob was uh, persuasive as fuck on that one. Yeah. I'm going to go with Black Christmas, too. Yeah, right. I feel like Jack almost wants to change his vote. I saw him nodding a little bit. <laughs> oh, there. yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I agree, but it's like, it's it's not by much. So, like, I totally hear, like, and I agree with everything right. that you're saying. Like, yeah. for sure. Like, I'm I'm also very okay that the point goes to Black Christmas. I just wanted yeah. to, like, give yeah. give some cred. <laughs> Is this to... the first week where we've thoroughly enjoyed both movie watching experiences? No, no, no. There's there have no. been other weeks. Okay. Oh, yeah. Jones. But, but, Jones but it's and National true. Treasure were fun. I when I was watching yeah. Jack Frost, I was I was silently thanking Rob in my mind because I was like, this is the kind of schlock that we should yeah. be watching on a regular basis. Like yeah. this to me is a kind of movie that inspired this podcast to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. So good job, Rob. Good job, um, Rob. <laughs> good job, Rob. Hey. You're hired. <laughs> uh uh, sounds sounds though, good. Good. Sounds. Someone else start this one. Uh, I am. I'll start it off. Jack Frost. Uh, Black Christmas had really cool improvisational, experimental piano string stuff. Jack Frost put thought into every single second of their soundtrack, and even the like uh, the the effects of the uh, the various props and stuff that were going on. There were some weird ADR moments, but I forgave those because it is, as I have said before, a bring your own movie experience uh, for everyone involved. Yeah. Uh, so Jack Frost for me. Mm. I'm not focused um, on this one, so I'm I I'm like... going to go the other way. I think that. Uh, that the the use of of juxtaposition with the the eerie Christmas music playing underneath the the really creepy moments either of the phone call or of individual murders, um, that that went over for me. I mean, it it, it isn't by any means a, a new convention or an original an original idea, um, but I I again maybe this is because it's fresh in my mind. I just watched it, but that really stuck out to me. And the audio just throughout was more seamless in in Black Christmas, I think, than Jack Frost. So Black Christmas gets my vote on this one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Pretty milk yeah, toast. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, I I have. To... There's something really great about Jack Frost and the uh, awesome metal music. Like yeah. that's like kind of putting me on the fence because like I really enjoy the comedy of it and it's fun and it's uh, you know it's energetic but like i said earlier there's something about that scene in black christmas where that mother opens her mouth and the telephone rings from her mouth right like it's like that that use of the ringing the constant ringing and even just whether it's too loud or not the sound of the killer on the phone and Mm. the multiple voices um and also the director had that actor standing on his head to do those voices to yeah, like cool. make it sound even weirder and uh i yeah i'm going to have to just go with black christmas again it's just like yeah that's a cool idea having yeah, him stand it puts on his pressure, head it puts pressure on your larynx oh that's so smart weird yeah what's it going to be jack yeah it's it's tricky because it's like I have such 
I have such a connection to what Jack Frost was doing and almost everything that it was doing um, that I, 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 yeah, like I loved all the things that Sean was saying. Um, but, um, hmm. Oh. I don't, oh I don't, but do you need one of us to, do you need two of us to like debate back and forth for you? No, because you, you kind of did. You made your points, I think, in many ways. My issue all around with Black Christmas, if I'm being honest, is like I liked it, but it's it's a bit, um, for me, I don't want to like downplay it and make it seem like, I again, that it's not good. I didn't like it, but it's like, it comes across a bit like almost bland to me. Like it just seems like a bit like middle frequency, even though they do some really cool stuff in it. Like the stuff that you're talking about is so true. But like Dan, like the description you gave of why the sound was good was like to me like a like a boring description of like why sound was good. It was just like it was clean and uh, it was seamless. And it's like, well, I don't necessarily want that. Like I want <laughs> I want something to be to like make more of an impact on me. You know, I, I got to tell you, I feel personally attacked with this critique, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you should because Jack Frost clearly was the better sound film, right, Jack? I'm. I'm gonna like. I mean, I'm it, gonna. It, it better be Jack Frost because if you're gonna take a stab at me like that <laughs> and then go with Black Christmas, it's not. It's not a stab at you, Dan. It's not a stab at you. Rob, how does it know, feel to be here at the 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 breakup of at the uh, dissolution of a, of a long time friendship? <laughs> um, I'm I'm kind of just. I think I'm just gunning for Jack Frost a bit, but I'm gonna give it to Jack Frost. Yes. So that's a tie. It's a tie. Yeah, so, so what do we do in this situation? Do well, we kind of leave it? We to keep see going what, and we see what happens. Yeah, we keep going. Okay. On my chart, I've given it a little like middle X. So right now we still have Black Christmas leading like mm -hmm. one to 0. 0.5. <laughs> I mean, Black Christmas well, might, might still win. To, <laughs> so. to, to, make this, to make this a little more interesting, should we maybe double back to acting and talk about story first? Because I think that the acting is a bit yeah. of a no-brainer. Sure. Right? Yeah, let's or, do story first. Yeah, yeah okay. Because again, I'll start with this one story. I'm saying no question, Jack Frost. It is more creative. It is more inventive. Something that I think of again, an argument that you've made in the past that I actually agree with then um, was <laughs> <laughs> unlike most times. No, no, damn it, Jack. Like, no, no, I'm just like, I got a good point that you've made where it's like on premise alone, like just the premise of Jack Frost, yeah. I think is more, more inventive and more exciting and more fun. Um, whereas... And I know that like um, that like from the way Rob talks about it, that he views uh, Black Christmas as being like a progenitor to to all these other um, movies. And that's super cool. But mm. that aside, because I'm not viewing it with that lens, it's just the movie on mm. its own. Yeah, it is. Like I said, like it's kind of just like people. It's like some cops. There's like a killer on the loose. And it's, it's just very it's it's so um middle of the road in so many ways it does cool stuff with it but it's like a very simple story that for me is trumped by the like playful uh silly and essentially stupid yeah. creativity of jack frost yeah i agree uh, yeah 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 I, I would say i would say when it comes to storytelling uh jack frost is definitely the most free yeah <laughs> Uh, which I think, which I respect and, uh, like I, I, you know what? I would have really loved to have been on that set and I would have really loved <laughs> yeah. to have been a part of that project. So I, I, yeah, it, I think I lean towards maybe even, yeah, Jack, Jack Frost. I feel like I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the same thing I like i watched this and i was like i want to be a part of this because this is this reflects so much of what i i value in schlocky films like this they yeah understand yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on, and i would be able to just throw in my my two cents and and it seems like a really creative group of of artists there yeah yeah uh -huh. daniel <clears throat> totally yeah no I'm, I'm in agreement this the 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 story and the camp of this movie was right up my alley. I love I love stupid shit like this. And I yeah. it pains me cuz I was really into Black Christmas and I I wanted so much more from the story because it seemed like they were they were setting up some really interesting things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I kind of it kind of petered out and the, end, uh, the ending like straight up bothered me. <laughs> yeah, there were some flaws. Um and and Jack Frost also had its own flaws, but 
leaned into them so hard. Yeah. Um, that you you got to give it credit. So yeah, I'm I'm yeah. I'm Jack Frost all the way on this one. Ooh, so we have one point each, and then a tie going into acts good question mark. So, but that acts was like, okay. That's interesting. I wonder how I have to like figure this out potentially. Yeah. Well, acts good is is Black Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. There's not really a discussion to be had there. I mean, I, Shannon yeah. Elizabeth was pretty incredible, but <laughs> listen, I have followed Shannon Elizabeth's career uh, intently since the mid '90s, so uh, I can say that this is not one of her best roles. Uh, so yes, Black Christmas. Did she have a career after American Pie? Yeah, yeah. she did was she, like, yeah, she, she wore, did. She did. She, she did another horror movie called Thirteen Ghosts. Right, she's in Thirteen right. Ghosts. Yeah. She's uh, she's in Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Yep, she's in um, the. I think uh, Scooby Doo or something as well. She's maybe? in the James Bond no. GameCube game Everything or Nothing as a voice <laughs> actor. Um, Sean, you really did follow her, didn't you? I owned the game. Oh, he saw God. American Pie and he was like, I I must follow her. Yeah. Listen, that... Nadia the foreign exchange student <laughs> is a cl- like Nadia the foreign, ex- foreign exchange student is a generational once in a lifetime. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. But yeah, act acting definitely uh, Black Christmas. So it's oh a solid four votes, a clean a clean four votes for that one. Uh, or watchability. So if you had to, or like, which which one of these movies are you going to put on first? Like really, like if you want to, if you want to play a this, movie again, this is so hard yeah. because there are yeah there are really I, I can think of ideal situations in my life where both of these movies are really appropriate. Like as a yeah. as a party movie, if I have friends over, Jack Frost a hundred percent. If I'm watching a movie with my girlfriend or maybe alone, probably Black Christmas. You so, know what I mean? Like these are these feel like situational movies more than just go ahead, Sean. So I'll say at a personal level, I'm going to judge this on a level of the way a movie affected me personally. I don't give a shit about anyone else. Um, Black Christmas disturbed me on a level that Jack Frost, as much as I thoroughly enjoyed this film, and will definitely rewatch Jack Frost, and will probably recommend Jack Frost two at some point in the future of this podcast, so that I can watch <laughs> it. Uh, Black Christmas shook me uh, a little bit more than I thought I was going to, so I'm going to go Black Christmas. Whoa. I'm I'm Hot Jack take. Frost again. I'm like Team Jack Frost. I had a great time with this movie, so like, I would definitely put it on again. Uh, like not like readily again. Both these movies, I'm not like in love with, but I I had a lot of laughs at uh, Jack Frost and yeah. like those little things that Rob mentioned make me want to go back even more and look for other dumb shit that they did. <laughs> and, like, I I just think there's more there's more to like mine and enjoy from that movie that I don't think um, I would get from watching Black Christmas again. It's, it feels like a movie that I don't need to see again. Right. I, f- I feel like saying there's more to mine from J- from Jack Frost is giving it a bit too much credit, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> there's more to... There's, there's like a deeper depth, like a, a much deeper depth to explore. A deeper depth. But... Uh, <laughs> Jesus. But... That that said, I mean, if I'm being honest, I think that there's, uh, I'm I'm probably more likely to watch Jack Frost sooner than I will Black Christmas too, because okay. Jack Frost is the kind of movie that you know in a couple of days I'll be having a conversation with a friend, and be like, "Have you fucking heard of this movie? It's bonkers. You have to watch it. Let's do. Let's watch it together. Right. You know what I mean? Like I think there's, I, there's more likely to be a situation very soon where I'll watch Jack Frost again as opposed to Black Christmas, which, outside of a spoopy Halloween month. I really don't have any desire to want to see. So, so, so Rob, uh, choose between your two childhood favorite films. <laughs> um, I, I'm moved by black Christmas. Like it rattles me. Like I'm like you, like it, uh, it, it's a bit more haunting. Uh, Jack Frost is funny. It's goofy. I like the fact that it's been a few years since I've watched it, but I actually do watch Black Christmas almost every year. Wow. Wow. Damn. 
All right. You know, it's like okay. a Christmas. It's like a Christmas movie for me. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> so oh so already like so like yeah, just by that like, it is a movie I just rewatch like. On it is it is already basis. a movie that has rewatchability for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You already have a precedent yeah. set. Um, yeah, because I watched I just watched uh, watched it last Christmas, so I was just like, oh okay, well <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Um, yeah, so yeah, I'm gonna have to keep going with Black Christmas on this one. So that's oh. another tie, right? So that's two Black There's, Christmases, yeah. two ties, and one Jack Frost. So that means w- with a totally different scoring than we'd ever yeah. had, but yeah. that means I think that Black Christmas, our Citizen is- Kane of the Week, is. What? Rob, say Black Christmas. Oh, Black Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Let me do a clap. Damn, that was the tightest. Yeah. Um, that was the tightest one we've ever had, I think. If we give if we give a point five to the ties, that gives Jack Frost a two and Black Christmas a three. So it is So we've yeah, had we've had we've had movies that type before. Yeah. But, but like, we never had ties. Tight. Yeah, that it's was that was tight. close. Yeah. yeah. It worked wow. out that it's just like those two ties canceled each other out and then it was just like a two to one. But like, yeah, yeah dang. As they say, dang. Yeah. Ooh, good but good like suggestions, both, Rob. Yeah, these were, this was <laughs> one of my favorite weeks, I think. Okay, so. Oh, uh, out of, oh absolutely. <laughs> like probably one of the best weeks we've done in this podcast. But Yeah, come back whenever you want, Rob. And assuming that Rob <laughs> has seen. Uh, Assuming that Rob has seen the other horror films we've watched this month, Twilight is not really a horror film, but I've se- I assume you understand the vagaries of Twilight. What is of this I've seen month? Twilight, yes. Okay. Of the eight films, Nosferatu, Twilight, Halloween, Krampus, The Thing, uh, Wind Chill, and then Black Christmas and Jack Frost, Ooh. which is the one that, which of these ones is the best to you of these eight films? Of this month. Oh that's shit! A, that's if a good I can question. even remember all the things you said. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I want an answer from everyone. Mm-hmm, right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, for me, I think I can say instinctively right away. I think the thing was the best viewing experience that I had. Yeah, the okay. thing stood out for me too. I think. Ah, eh, I mean, I really enjoyed Black Christmas. Mm-hmm. And um, Windchill, you loved Windchill. I right? loved Windchill, wind and chill. and Nosferatu was also really <laughs> up there for me. Um, I don't, yeah, I, it's, it's close between the thing and black Christmas. I think that if we're looking at, cause it's hard to classify the thing as, as a horror movie, really. Cause it's more of like a sci-fi film, right? So I don't, that's a sci-fi horror. It's fucking it's grotesque. Sci- okay. All right. Yeah. Well, no need to, no need for profanities, Sean. It's um, fragging grotesque. <laughs> I uh, yeah I mean I can I say a tie can I say a draw between the thing and Black Christmas Absolutely. whatever sure you just yeah. made up the thing yeah you can say whatever Rob, you want Rob of of the films mm-hmm. that I threw at you really quickly of those you remember which are the best in your opinion yeah Halloween's in there Krampus is in there yeah uh well yes for sure Halloween Halloween for me is just like pure nostalgia it's <laughs> it, it's what uh, it's really what pulled me into loving horror. Um. Yeah, I listened to your last ep- uh, episode about Halloween, and it really pissed me off that you picked Francis <laughs> over Halloween. <laughs> um, Oops, no regrets. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, I would say Halloween. But the thing, I mean, the thing, just like uh, for from a special effects point of view, mm-hmm. is so good. Yeah, so, so 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 good. Um, so, but I, I, I'm gonna have to say uh, Halloween. I mean, cool. Right. I, cool. I too will say the thing is of this month. I I love this month because I'm pretty sure every single film was something that I have never seen before. Yeah, I, I had seen I Twilight so. before. Never seen Twilight. Um, not a horror. Yeah, not no, a horror. Fair, fair. It was it was our first week of the spooky month, and it was just. Um, like vampire, vampire. I had, to, I had to do. Right. I had. I had to do a pivot because uh, we're going to come back to this episode one day once it's actually out. I didn't realize it wasn't. It wasn't out yet. Uh, I wanted to do Psycho versus Psycho Gorman. 
if you're familiar with Psycho Gorman, which is like like literally yeah. just coming out now, but I thought it was out already. Um, so we'll do that one later. You're welcome to come join, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Like come oh, back. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh sure. yeah. Also, did you guys know, uh, Sean and Jack, that you guys have a friend in that movie? Uh, Steven. Yeah, yeah Steven. Yeah, yeah. He, does, he did some voice stuff. He does a, I think, yeah, though. Steven. The guy who did uh, Turtle Neck, Turtle Neck with. with Steven Vlahos. Oh, Steven Vlahos. Nice. Yeah, Shout out Steven Vlahos. If you're listening, you're definitely not. Uh, <laughs> love you, man. Yeah, you can come on the come on the pod, dude. Okay. Come on the pod. So um, that means that the Citizen Kane of the month is the is thing. The thing based off of <laughs> <laughs> the thing. There we go. That was Sean's spoopy laugh. <laughs> um, and it was, it's, it shook me to my core. Well, um, so uh, that, that uh, wraps up our spoopy Halloween month. Yeah. Um, thanks for, uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for, thanks for joining Rob. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no problem. My pleasure. Let's, yeah. uh, l- let's, let's um, sign off with some. Uh, uh, no, you have to announce the picks for next week, Jack. Oh, yeah. Can you remember the podcast? Once? I, I really, I really, really can't. Okay. Um, <laughs> and what the, the picks? Oh, yeah. The picks for yeah, next your week. your picks. My picks. That we absolutely uh, have not watched and recorded already. Yeah, we definitely haven't done that already. We didn't, yeah. we definitely didn't record an episode before this one. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> Dan's furious. He's like, why he's like, would you let them know that we do things at a production level that is not synchronous with how we release things? <laughs> he's like, guys, the illusion is broken. Yeah, there, there's a certain facade we have to keep up for production value, and you guys are just fucking shitting all over it, man. <laughs> Great. Who um, cares? So the the movies uh, last week for us and next week for you are uh, it's going to be Taxi Driver versus Taxi. <laughs> Whoa! Oh my God! What, yeah. Rob? What do you think huh? about that <laughs> first response? That's, I like that. So, that. That's fun. Yeah, that's uh, Taxi <laughs> with wasn't. Queen Latifah and Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, uh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Taxi Driver. So, uh, I should've... yeah, I can already make a prediction. <laughs> what? What's your prediction? What's your prediction? We're not going to give it away. The three of us will not give it away. What's your prediction, no. Rob? I oh wow well, you know I think uh, I think uh, probably uh, Taxi Driver is probably going to be the one. Okay. I mean, okay. Yeah. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Hot take. Hot take. I, I mean, mean, Jimmy Fallon and Queen Latifah are a great pair, but. Uh, you Thank know. you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, be yeah. sure to listen next week if you want to uh, and watch those movies because they're they're both fine to watch, yeah. um, and. Uh, and yeah, listen in. You know, do the we're, whatever. It's a podcast. So anyway, um, <laughs> let's let's do a little sign off now with uh, real quick. Let's do a couple of our Thanos teasers. I'm making up theme songs. Um, so these Thanos teasers are are just little little things we do for fun, um, inspired by the Thanos teasers we saw leading up to his arrival in the MCU, where he would appear post credits and do something just random to foreshadow his appearance. We like to imagine uh, what those might might be as a little quick fun thing at the end of the podcast. So um, I'm going to start. I think. Uh, do people want to start with a certain movie? Do people care? No. I have nothing prepared. Okay, great. I'm going to start with Black Christmas. Okay. I mean, sorry, I mean Jack Frost. I mean okay. the opposite, the one. Movie. Oh, not that movie. Um, and I don't know why, because I was, I really enjoyed, like, like we talked about, that there was this, like, snowman contest in the, in the town, like, mm-hmm. square or whatever, like mm-hmm. the crossroads there uh, on Main Street. And it was, like, this random patch of styrofoam and then no other snow anywhere else in, like, the sunny street. Um but I kind of want that to be resolved still. So I think it cuts to like, they've put up a little stage and it's just someone being like in a cabo hat being like, and, and, and this year the award for best snow sculpture goes to little Tony Stark. Come on up here, Tony. Mm-hmm. And this little kid walks up and like, has like, like not a full goatee, <laughs> but like clearly shadow. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he's like, thanks. And he's like handed the, like handed the award and he like holds it up and he's like, yay. And like someone's taking a photo and then it like pans over to his sculpture. Like, and it's Thanos, like as the thinker or something. <laughs> and then like, he just goes like, like, and this makes it, maybe he has icicle teeth. I don't know. He does like a Jack, he makes a face and that's it. it. Yeah. I love it. That's good. Um, mine is the credits, uh, the credits roll out and we fade in on uh, a, f- a nice, warm, fully 
burning fireplace. Uh, we pull out to reveal a uh, an, a cozy a cozy living room where we see a young Thanos in uh, a little dress and pigtails. <laughs> And Every fucking again, time, again, <laughs> and and we hear, "Can you tell me another story?" Come out of his oh. mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, actually. And then it cut, and then we we cut to an older, like more crotchety looking, I guess, like not Thanos, but an, like an like an alien from Thanos's planet, in like a cardigan and glasses and bad teeth, and he's like, "All right." Got another one for you, and then we just cut there. I just want to see Thanos be the little girl who, who wants to hear yeah, the story you do. every yeah. week. <laughs> <laughs> Rob's coming back. <laughs> yeah. um, mine is uh, Thanos. Is the it's a young Thanos. He's fresh out of uh, a military school? Question mark. And uh, he's leading the team of this crack FBI uh, frontline assault squad that is pinned behind the blizzard that is hitting the area. He can't, and he's used like he's on the phone. He's like, what do you mean we can't chop her in? And he's like, the weather's too, too rough. We can't get you in. He slams it down. God damn it. And and someone leans to him and says like, yeah, if only like 50 percent less people were using the roads right now, we could get through fine. And then it goes in <laughs> on Thanos's face and goes. <sighs> <laughs> I'd like Everybody to. Might. I want to suggest an edit, which is which is that it, it pans up on him, like he's gonna go, like, mm -hmm. and he just goes, "Well, how the?" He goes, "Well, how the fuck am I gonna <laughs> change that?" Yeah. <laughs> well, what am I supposed to do? It's like yeah. really early. It's like way earlier in the timeline yeah. of Thanos arriving <laughs> yeah. into the MCU, where he's like hasn't even crossed his mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like incredulous to him. <laughs> uh, Rob, do you have anything for us? <laughs> I mean, you're not usually in the podcast. But... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, so, like, the sheriff's driving down the road, right? And he ends up having one of his many unchecked PTSD uh, flashbacks, right? Nice. And so it's just like a flash, and it's Thanos going down the stairs of the courthouse, like, with the handcuffs behind him, and Thanos is just yelling, I'm gonna kill you! I'll find a way! I'll find a way! <laughs> I'm going to kill half of all of you. <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> that's that's right. better than 75% of what we've thrown out in the history of this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> if, and if, if Dan did the flashback, I, I it would kept, be a flashback to Thanos, concise. but he's the wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> which brings me to my Black Christmas Thanos teaser, which is mm. he's yeah. the replacement house mother uh, for the next batch of <laughs> sorority <laughs> girls that comes through. <laughs> And he's just wearing the the same old shit, and he's drinking the toilet hooch, and you know it's it, it's kind of like the a uh, house bunny prequel uh, is is my imagination. Right, great, yeah. great. Yeah, I don't sure. have one, so he's he's the real killer. Ooh, <laughs> whoa! Well, yeah, There's I like, have. It, <laughs> it pans. Yeah. You, you get another shot, like Dan. You get another yeah. shot after the credits of the house, and then you just see like a glowing, like purple light from the attic window, and you're like, yeah. "Oh shit! Oh, oh shit!" Knows. Okay. Uh, sorry, Rob. What do you did you have an idea? Sorry. I was just gonna say, yeah, it's it's uh, fan spot the door, like looking through the crack. Right, you can just see his his eye there, his little purple eye, and he's just like, Agnes. <laughs> You're strong, but I could snap my fingers and you'd cease to exist. <laughs> That's Perfect. good. That's good. I like I my thought. Again, I don't know exactly what he does about this. I like the idea of Thanos being the one who gets the lewd call. That like he's <laughs> that he's like on his like spaceship <laughs> and they're like they're like, Your your excellence, we have a communication coming in. He's like, put it through. And then it's just like them sitting. It's like a whole bunch of them like sitting in like this very large like uh, not throne room but like command center of the spaceship. And he's like in his like command chair. And then it's just like Billy, where did they put Billy? Oh, Agnes. And it's like a, it's like a, one of the long ones. And it's just him just like going like, mm. and like it's like various shots of like other aliens just being like, oh. And then I don't know I don't know what he does at the end of that sequence though. Um, oh. where he's like that one for sure though, like yeah. that one, or like I like him. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the punch 
Either okay. he becomes one of his enemies or he becomes one of his allies. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I like the idea too of him being like, also interrupting me like, hey, uh, this is uh, this is Thanos. And the guy being on the phone being like, hey, oh, oh, wait, sorry. This this isn't number six. And he's like, no, no, no. This is fully like a spaceship, like in space. <laughs> he's like, oh my God. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh my God. Do we, so then cut, do we then cut to some alien in the base of the ship running through the like phone lines and be like, <laughs> uh, you got to keep him on longer. I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> yeah. But it looks spacey. Yeah. Yeah. So something approximately like that. I just like the idea of them getting like the, the, somehow gets patched through to a spaceship and something happens. Dope. <laughs> well, <laughs> what a month we have forsaken. Great. That's, that's not a sin. Well, we've probably hit around our two hour mark. So let's, uh, let's, uh, let's close it out here. Very well. Yeah. Uh, for those of you that are still listening, thank you yeah, for thanks. hanging in there with us. Rob, uh, what's your, what's your podcast? Once yeah. More. Uh, yeah, you, uh, my podcast is the RIP podcast. Don't forget those dots between those R's and that I and that P. Um, yeah. And you can follow me at the dot RIP dot podcast on Instagram. Yeah. If you're looking for something else spooky this Halloween, uh, check that out. Spoopy. 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 Great. Spoopy. And, uh, <laughs> oh my god <laughs> um and if you if you're a regular listener of the show and you have some uh some requests for movies you'd like us to review or you have your own thanos teaser ideas that you want to you want to pitch uh you can email those to us at citizen kane versus at gmail citizen kane vs vs at gmail.com or uh if you're watching this on youtube leave a comment in the comment section um or find us on instagram where citizen kane versus podcast uh there's not a lot to or, see there it's just a lot of posters but it's a or look to get up hold where we live and like habitate our attic for two or three days and yeah if you could call us acquaintances call us from inside our houses <laughs> yeah um but in general yeah do the things if you feel like it you can you know like if you want to subscribe if you want to share it with other people or tell other people word of mouth is a big thing with podcasts so yeah, yeah if there's some if, friends that want to watch movies together this is a great way to do it and I if you're listening on spotify uh or any, any of the other podcast platforms rate and review this if you feel so inclined because that is actually Ooh. really helpful for uh spreading of the po- the yeah. word of mouth of our podcast so. make sure to include how sexy i am please <laughs> and if, if you haven't seen Sean, he's moderately sexy. Oh, yeah. woo dee woo 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 Thank you. Jeff, beep, face us out. Citizen King versus Spooby. Billy. Yeah. And we're done. Billy. <laughs>